got 10 weeks probably to save this class. A lot of you could easily do 10 transactions and have two free seven ten weeks that you're just able to fly this. So this is great. If you gotta put the effort in, you gotta be accountable, we're gonna go through how to we're gonna do that this program. Uh, a couple things, we're gonna have action steps. We're going to kind of modify it a little bit. How they do it is again, I know our time's valuable, is they have their Monday morning kind of motivation. So Monday morning before Tuesday training. They have a get together where we're meeting with each other, you know, going through our accountability, you know, our results. But I plan on doing that on Tuesdays. You know, so I think before we get into the material, the first hour or so is going to be our accountability, our Monday morning kind of motivation on Tuesday morning, uh, kind of going through challenges, successes with each other for the first hour. Then we'll jump into the material. So I'd rather go an hour longer while we're already here than have to come in Monday, you know, around your schedule, come back in Tuesday because we, you know, it just, it's just too much. So that's kind of my plan going forward uh, with, the, with the action steps and accountability before we jump into the material. So our first action step for today is, these are the, the three books that transformed my career. Honest to God, if it wasn't for this book, I wouldn't know half the stuff I do, achieve half the things I did. And you can see, I mean, like, I mean it's highlighted throughout here, pages are ripped, torn, uh, who has this book? Who's read this book? Everybody, if you, if you log in at Amazon right now, but if you don't have this book right now, I want you to buy it right now. Get on there, buy this book. Hey, it's on Audible uh, too, if you don't want to read it. Yeah. So this is number one. So again, we have 10 weeks. There's three books we've gone through. Challenge and action stuff for today is get all through all three of these books in 10 weeks. You literally, like, you will be able to put this down if, if you get into it like that. Hey, Mike, what's the title? Billionaire Real Estate Agent, or the MREA, you heard it referred to. Buy it. Number two, who has the one thing? Who's read the one thing? Number two, guys. Both these are by Gary Keller. These two alone, if you apply them, read them, I guarantee you'll take your business to the next level. It's as simple as that. Uh, there, we, we did bold. There was, there was an agent in, in bold. He's a great agent. He reads this once a quarter, four times a year for about the past six years. He's about gone on almost 30 times to read this book through because it just keeps you on track, keeps you focused. So these two, you don't have them, afford them. And then the last one, who has the Miracle Morning? Who's read the Miracle Morning? Good. The number three. These aren't big reads, guys. You, you literally, you can knock this out. I knocked this out in, in one sitting in about an hour and a half. You know, it's not, it's not a hard read at all. Uh, you apply these three books, buy them, but next time we come here, you get accountability. I want you to bring these three books. I want everybody to have these three books sitting in front of them. Yeah. Prove you got it. See where you are in the book. Keep us accountable and get through these books. Ten weeks, three books. First half. Uh, all right. So, you want to go to the next read? So basically, you know, overview of this is we're going to you know, get comfortable with getting it being uncomfortable. We've got to get out of our comfort zone, take our business to the next level. Simple as that. We've got to do things we don't like to do. We've got to double down things that are working for us. And we've got to add new new sources of uh, business. So that's basically the whole game plan to generate uh, 12 transactions over next year and what we're doing now. Just think about it. Our average sale price is around, you know, 180, 190. So about six thousand dollars, you know, times twelve. What, what, what's sixty, seventy thousand dollars going to do to you know your life next year, your goals, your freedom, your financial goals, everything? So we're going to set goals. We're going to do all this together, but you know, easily attainable to stick to this. Uh, so we're going to learn mindset and strategies to, to launch a real estate career uh, or take our career to the next level. Next. Uh, so these are basically the workshops. You know, some days we're going to combine together, you know, jump over some things. So different materials are different brand new agents as well as seasoned agents. So we're going to, you know, kind of modify a little bit. But we're all like, you know, off different stages of our career, but we're not afraid of, you know, passing the test, you know, pretty much everybody that's going to be done that. So we're going to do goals, prospecting the systems, database, sales cycle, uh, buying process. We're going to kind of go with the paperwork and, you know, affect those houses, kind of go through that pretty quickly, skip over a lot of it. Uh, Next three, financial and sales, the cost sheets, personal marketing and farming, finding sellers, and listing presentations, marketing and servicing and listings, listing paperwork, manage transaction. You know, a lot of it doesn't sound you know, fun or anything, but believe me, 
you know, we try to get better at everything we do, take our service to the next level, and then increase our business as effectively as anything else with referrals. Next screen. All right, next one. All right, we get caught up here. I'm on my notes are on this one. All right, first we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go around the room and whoever wants to volunteer and kind of define you know what success you know, means to somebody a couple two people in here. What what success means? Meeting your goal. Meeting your goal. Anybody else? Freedom for me. Freedom. Yes. And that's why I wear my freedom shirt. That's kind of what success, success means to me. It is be able to freedom to do what I want, when I want, and enjoy the things I want to enjoy, especially for my family. You know, that's my, that's my big, you know, big why. Um, be, you know, that's what we want to, you know, achieve and create today and, and, and start with and note is, is right your big why. Well, why do you do what you do? Why do you get up every day? Why do you put up with big assholes out there sometimes to, to, you know, to, to get a deal done? And, and that, and if you don't have a big why, then you're just kind of going through the motions. And then you're, you're, you get frustrated, you give up, you get out, you get out of the right mindset, you don't achieve your goals, or you don't, you know, get another customer, or you don't you know, get into your lead generation. So you always have to, you know, my my old office had a big board, my big why was up there. You know, my big why was to be able to support, give my family everything I could they, they dream of, be able to support them, uh, all their goals and dreams, and be able to get back on my church computer. You know, so that, that's my big why. You know, my financial freedom allows me to achieve this. It all starts with one, one transaction. Uh, so we got to have a great work ethic. We got to have perseverance. We got to have a positive mindset. Uh, next screen. So we're going to be, you know, talking about, you know, the self-discipline, the work ethic we need, kind of the mindset we need on a daily, <laughs> monthly, yearly basis to achieve our goals. We got to be consistent. We got to stick to a schedule. You know, 30, 60 days creates a habit, but one year creates a lifestyle. You know. We're going to be here over the next, you know, 60 days plus. So, you know, we're going to create a lot of new good habits. Hopefully, all this, you know, time spent together. We got to keep those habits long we can for the whole next eight, nine months a month together and make those lifestyle changes. Once this becomes ingrained, trust me, you, you, you get like this guilty feeling if, if you're not sticking to what either works or you get off your ground. You know, and, and kind of think about some of the us, you know, the other day kind of going over some of this stuff. And, and trust me, it's like when I was when I was banging the phones out. If I didn't, if I missed my schedule with that day, I felt like it ruined my day. I felt like I'm guilty, like I'm missing, you know, opportunity. I'm missing, you know, supporting my big why. So the big thing is you got to, you know, create these habits to create life Next screen. All right, be committed. You know, how committed are you? You got to become crystal clear on what you want in your professional career. You know, we've got to set goals. You gotta be crystal clear in these goals. They just can't be, you know, kind of, you know, eh, I'd be happy with this, I'd be happy with that. We need, we need it down to this dollar and cent the number of transactions, the people you want to help. The more crystal clear your goals are, the more focused, place focused you're gonna be. It's simple, simple as that. You gotta be accountable. That's what this is about here. This is the first step. Being here is the first step for accountability. We are going to be each other's accountability partners every week before we launch the new material. We're gonna partner up with accountability partners throughout the whole next year to be able to check in. And again, this is get out of your comfort zone. We're not gonna know, we're not gonna put partner buddy buddy up because it's buddy buddy is a lot easier. It's like you know what I will skip this one your buddy buddy. We're gonna like somebody, you know, Bob may have never talked to, to Amy. So Bob may be your accountability partner because you're not gonna let each other down. You know, so that, that's the main thing of getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, whenever I did my coaching, uh, I'm gonna do it. I've been through coaching and big coaching advocate. I don't have all the answers. I'm not a pro at it, but maybe I'm using my past experiences. So, you know, that was the biggest thing is when I even was a chiropractor, I had a coach. You know, I was spending $1,000 on my coach basically just to scan sheets over through so they see my number, you know, on a weekly basis to keep me move forward. So I didn't want to let coach down. You don't want to let your accountability partner down. They're going to know your goals. They're going to be right, right there along with the journey uh, with us. And great sales people figure it out. There's always more than one solution to any challenge. You know, that's what I love about the culture we're creating here is the sharing, the openness, people reaching out to each other. It's like an agent. It's unlike anything I've seen before. You know, it's really like great group of individuals who are all learning from each other. You know, I learn stuff every single day. Dean learns stuff every single day. And we want to be able to, you know, just incorporate that into each other's business. So when we're protecting our business, ourselves, protecting our clients, and, you know, you know protecting our business. Keep us, you know, out of the legal issue. But you know, just for example, you, I know we all dealt with agents that would hold on. 
you know, they're just getting into business for the wrong reasons. You know, we have stages where you need to just sit down with us, but they're out there doing deals and busy. And if you don't, if you don't do the contract and analysis, that's sweet step one is read every single line of sales agreement. I'll give you a perfect example. This might, this might help somebody just, you know, we have an agent who had a, you know, 10 day inspection period of time, got the BRI in within 10 days, uh, asked for the request. And then you read the contract. If the seller doesn't respond and you don't terminate the time, you accept that property as is, as a buyer. The agent had no idea. There's seven days past the expiration. Five thousand dollar hand might check on like a hundred eight thousand dollar property. Uh, the agent on the other side is willing to work. They want to get this deal done. He's like, hey, the seller is willing to do ABC and give you two thousand dollars credit still, and get or we got to legally enforce, and the agent still can't wrap his head around like, well, why, why the hell did you hammer? Like, because you didn't terminate. You have no idea what the contract stated, that if you didn't terminate in time, because it's not, the, it's not the seller's responsibility. Once you said that BRI, you got to still watch the contract, because your buyer is on the floor for that property if you don't terminate. So that's just one one example. Every single day, someone pops up with contract questions in the office. Go through. So you got you to know what we're doing. And you got to do that contract and not, you know, but give your clients the best, you know, service, not they you know, uh, it's the cost of seller family. You know, you think they're going to get a report from that client? In fact, I'm going to tell everybody, five, six people, agent so-and-so cost me 5000 but they don't tell everyone. Oh. That's a way to ruin your career. Next slide. All right. It's an estimate as much as 90% of success can be attributed to attitude. Simple as that. As a matter of fact, it's not a usual for attitude. The only difference between the person who is successful and the person who is not. It's easy to get a bad attitude to, to derail you on a daily basis, hour to hour. It's a it's an emotional roller coaster. You know, you're dealing with people all the time. One minute you're great, the next minute it's like, bam, you get this phone call and they're screaming at you, they're pissed, and it, it just, it's up and down. But again, if you get that big why, if you focus on why you're doing it, why you're persevering, why you're you know, being tolerable to these people who work with on a daily basis. It's going to keep your attitude positive. That's the first nine percent success. Just keeping, keeping positive attitude. Self talk matters. When a listing appointment arises, are you going to be going out expecting success or failure? You know, expect failure, and it will be evident how you look, how you, you know, you choose your words, how you present. You know, I hear agents in here all the time saying, you know, I've got this listing no appointment, but I know I'm going up against Monica. And he's for their feet already. Who gives a shit if Monica Miller goes out there? Tell them what separates you. Why are you different? You know, when I you know when I was first in the business, I went up against a Bonnie Boy and Triple Link on this, and I got the listing. You know, I went through their confidence, sold myself. They chose me because of what I projected on. You know, they didn't, they didn't ask about past sales, how many you know you got up on there. But again, it's mindset. I went to that listing appointment saying, you know, I'm gonna get this listing appointment. You know, if you go in there, oh, you know, I'll get my Taylor, she's going in. I know she came to them today. It's like I we see it every day. You know, are you gonna get that appointment? I'm gonna get that appointment. It, it comes across. You know, in your demeanor, in your confidence, they, they, they can see in mile away. You walk in there, you start fumbling over your words, you know, and you might as well go. If, you, if, you're, if you're thinking about that, who's going there, who else you're up against, you might as well just cancel the appointment. It's more, more likely you're not going to get it. You might as well just put your time somewhere else. You might as well just sit out or So it's all about mindset, guys. Next slide. All right. Yep, where's that? Client first mentality. You know, you know the old adage, you know, the client's always right. You know, and, and my opinion is clients mostly right 90% of the time, there's 10% of the time, that client's wrong. You gotta you gotta you gotta let the client know they're wrong. I mean you, you just you can't be abused and you can't be afraid to fire somebody. Again, we're gonna talk about being the most productive in your day moving forward, how to achieve everything you need to in a day. Uh, and if you're dealing with people that's draining you sucking the life out of you, you got to fire them. They're not always right. But we should have a client first mentality going into it, but then if that changes, we're getting used, we're getting used, then we've got to, we can't let that go on. Who's fired a client in the last two weeks? Two weeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was your buyer. Mm -hmm. And it was on the Facebook group. She yeah, had a buyer who wanted to drive everywhere. Everywhere over Gone Street Earth. But she couldn't go in Allegheny County because she had days there for 40 years in Allegheny County. Yeah. She was there. So she could drive to Butler and Green. County, Beaver. Beaver. Um, and basically, what the guy was doing was like, I don't want to waste my agent's time. I'm going to use her, drive her, drive her from God's green earth, and when the time comes to the model, I'll just get back to my agent. 
That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. Did she, she suss it out with the decision? Hard. Did she just save countless hours that now she can go and get two, three clients that are actually gonna respect her time, her effort, and, and actually help her goal to get closed transactions? Who else fired somebody recently? Somebody over here raised their hand. It wasn't raised until like about a month ago. What happened? I put five offers in for them, and they kept lowballing, and I was I was done. I said I'm I'm done. I'm sorry, I can't help you no more. You're not being you know competitive in the market, and they weren't they weren't happy at all. Well, then well, how did what did they say? How, how did it? Well, they were. Um, I don't I don't want to be prejudiced. Not they're not they're the um they they were the. But they were they their culture is below. I just, I just, yeah, 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 cultural thing. It's cultural thing. It's cultural thing. Yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and they were lovely and wonderful, but I couldn't do it no more. No. No. Uh, that's a that's a great point. No, knowing the culture of the individuals we're working with, going into it is going to help you in the process. I have I have a uh, I put an offering yesterday. You know, an Asian couple. The negotiation is part of the, the, the enjoyment. You know, they they they, they, they like this aspect and going back, you know, and then you know, we went in 170 on you know, a 199 listing. I'm not necessarily but the they the firewall counter, we went to 185 on 199 on a house and still went up. Because they they felt insulted. Like, oh, they don't want to do it. The fire thing, you know, this is all part of the part of the process. That's a good point. You know, it probably doesn't matter where we're going to end up, it's still going to be realistic. But again, you got to be able to fire me. Your time is more valuable. You know, she, you know they, they'll never really change. You know, no. every every offer you write up, every paper you submit, it's an hour wasted. I bet you I probably showed them 30 houses. Yeah, I'll never do it again. What do you think? Just estimate total time with a 15 hour, 20 hour? About 20. 20 hours. That's half of the work is wasted. Yeah. Zero. About 20 hours. And they were lovely. I, they are lovely. I, you know, I, I like them, but. At the end of the day, I'm sorry, I'm moving on. Yeah, Amy, did you have a yeah just a guy that I thought he was probably a sex offender, mm. not oh, wow. <clears throat> with women but with kids. Ooh. Too many red flags, and he didn't know what he wanted. He was all over the place. I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Houses <laughs> playground. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's too side. weird. Oh, side, it's too long of a story. <laughs> it's on the listening side as well. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, we met with agents yesterday that's listing, and it's it's a great property. It's the most valuable property on the street, where they, they range from you know, a million plus to three hundred thousand. And it's a location. And the seller's unrealistic of what they're going to get out of it. She's spending thousands of dollars in advertising already, and she's like, "What do we want?" He can stop is what they do. It's like you know, it, it, this is all about price. You know, you can you know, she went above and beyond any agent typically would have done marketing this property, and she's just getting more and more in the hole. You know, visually, your listing contract, the reality sets in a lot of times, but a lot of times it doesn't. And you gotta learn when to, when to pump the brakes and say, you know, well, I'm not dumping my penny in this because uh, I'm competing my funds, it's never gonna sell. And you gotta be sometimes go to the seller and say, you know what, you know, this, is, this isn't, you know, you're, you're not following my. So we're gonna terminate this agreement. A lot of times I've had buyers and sellers who get ready to buy or you have this conversation. They do the complete 360, and it just totally transforms how they act, especially in buying stuff. You know, I've had buyers like, you know what? So you're serious, and you're ready to pull the trigger, and you know, I, 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 you know, I apologize, but my time is more valuable than you. So, and, well, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll narrow it down. We'll narrow it down. So, we'll, we'll be narrow it down. Simple listing, and then you know, if, it, if I can show it to you, I'll show it to you. Boom! I mean, they did 360. We sold two properties. We got our clients. It's just like some people have so much time. They just like going out to see houses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Seriously, that's why I charge not three ninety five, I charge four ninety five because that one hundred dollar extra the fee I put in my pocket my gas yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, I do it on every every transaction. The hundred dollar gas money. I mean guys, if you don't value your time and what you're worth, they can't pay that. Yourself with you know honesty, confidence, and care. You know, I mean, we've got a great group of agents. I, 
I know you all personally here, that this office was. You know, we got some bad seats out of our office, you know, that weren't honest, mm -hmm. and honest and we cared about people. But, you know, we made mistakes, we're gonna make mistakes. But, you know, that's what we're trying to do moving forward. We need to talk from our you know, perspective and our heart is protecting the agents we bring in here because one bad seat can really, you know, spoil the whole bunch and distract the whole bunch. Uh, so, again, but, you know, as you guys are all honest, competent, and you care. Uh, kind of preach to the choir on, on some of these things here. So affirmations for success. Uh, guys, open up your, your, your handouts, uh, the launch handouts. There, there's a page with some affirmations on there. The launch handouts for bigger title. Uh, I think it's in, I think it's in the handout one, actually. Page 12. Page 12. Yeah, page 12. Uh, so the guys, there, read through these, these affirmations, and we're going to go around the room. And everybody's going to pick up and say there and, and read out their favorite affirmation out loud. So spend a minute here, read through these. Does everybody know what an affirmation is? <laughs> yeah. Does anybody say this every day? Bob, which one jumps out at you? I am personally responsible for my level of success. Perfect. Kathy? I am the cause of my business. I actively seek qualified prospects and my positive attitude and professionalism attracts them. Let's just keep going around. My level of success is in my hands. <clears throat> oh, I have the ability to be successful. I'm the cause of my business. I tend to all details, no matter how tedious. I tackle difficult tasks and uncomfortable situations with patience and confidence. My level of success is in my own hands. I create my success through my thoughts. <laughs> 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 um, I'll just do. I'm, I am personally responsible for my level of success. Um, <laughs> I know my value. Uh, I recognize that some situations are beyond my control and show concern for all situations, but accept responsibility for only those I can control. I'm personally responsible for my own You know, that's, that's, you know, what we, you know, the kind of common theme is, is realizing, again, okay, it's up to us. We're responsible. We've got to take control of it. Nobody else is going to do it for us. Uh, <laughs> and then we got to make it happen. Again, this, this is, we're not, you know, we're, we're independent contractors, but remember what we are. We're called independent business owners running a major business. You know, we, we don't think of it that way sometimes. Uh, but affirmations, you look at the most successful people from every industry, every walk of life. People wake up in the morning with a positive affirmation before they get out of bed. They seem to be the best damn day. I'm going to go get a million dollar buyers. You say I'm going to get out of bed and, and, and every single day or whatever it may be, that's going to set the tone for your day. Before you go to a listening presentation, Sit in the car, two minutes. I'm gonna get this listing. This is my listing. Nobody else is better listening than me. This is my listing. You know, and I do this when I'm, when I'm there. It's silly until I started doing it. I thought that's not. I'm gonna sit in my car and say, "This is my listing. I'm the best listing." You know, but you know, when you do it and you go into that presentation, oh my God, the energy you have and then you feel like that you are the piece of best ever. You will beat every agent out there, and there's nothing more rewarding after you, you know. And you won't know sometimes after you get the listing that the seller will say, you know what? You know, I met with so-and-so and so-and-so, you know, and I showed you. I just have the confidence boost. You know, go in there. Nobody's going to be offer more value, be more honest, respectable, and, and do the more that the sell your listing than me. And honestly, when it comes to working against mega agents or big agents in your mind who are mega agents, that's one of the biggest, you know, sales propositions I, 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 I go in with. And listen, you know, who do you think I focus more on your listing? Somebody who has 20 listings in this price point that are just another number, or me that I'm trying to get this price point and I have half a dozen listings. I'm going to put all my damn effort, energy, and marketing into boosting your listing. You're not going to be another number. You're not going to sit there. I have one of those expired listings. Say, look, they're point active listings. Look, you 
last can expire the last six months itself. You want you want them to be not expired and why it's happening? You better be getting attention and work with you to be honest with you up front. You know, that that's a that that, that is the exact conversation I've used in the same listening presentation. If I know somebody in that area has gone after a four hundred dollars dollar bonus and they probably met with it. And it, 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 it's not I'm not putting down the competition. We never want to do that. So being true, you know, it, it, the stats. You know, here's the expired list. Here's what they have. Here's the expired. I'm, I'm not bashing. I'm not saying anything about their ethics. I'm not saying anything about them personally. I'm using simple multi-list facts that can pull up. So that's the first thing. Never bash the competition because agents out there do it all the time. Uh, they go in there and, and, and you'll hear, you'll hear, you know who they are. You'll find out who they are. They'll, they'll say everything they can to get those things. And again, but that's kind of where they go so far before. You know. uh, and we never want to put down the the competition, we never want to criticize a client, lose our cool, make excuses, talk to the client in a negative tone. You know, all the things you guys know. Kind of like the, we're preaching to the choir a lot here. Uh, but again, always show confidence, show concern for the customer's wants, needs, and desires. One of the biggest things I, you know, when I went started on it in the listings, and why I'm talking so much about listings, guys, because we all need to become listing agents or listing agents. Melissa, Melissa she, 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 she does positive affirmations every day, she doesn't even really know it right now. How many times have you told me I'm going to be a listing agent? Every time I see Every time <laughs> That's a positive affirmation. She doesn't know what she's doing. But you know, in deep down inside, she is listing, going to be a listing machine, and she is becoming a listing agent. Because that, again, listings, three L's listings, leverage, and lead gen. Those three L's is what you need to do to make a business in that level. A product marketed listing should generate one buy. Not for that listening per se, but it should generate an inquiry about that property that you might be able to find that buyer in our property in the same price point, you know, criteria for your time. Right? Because it doesn't take time. You list it, you know, devote, you know, a little bit of time each week for that listing, an open house here and there. It's the most money, it's the biggest money making activity at least in my time. If you think I'm a listing agent, if you focus on listings, you can go into a big agent. You can go do a damn thing, you know. Have somebody in the office show, show you a, somebody acquire you a buyer, meet somebody in the office, say, hey, I'll give you a referral fee. You know, help, me, help this buyer want to see the property please split with me. You know, there's, we got to leverage our time. So we're going to talk about how to do that more effectively. Uh, that's what I'm talking about listening. You know, show confidence, you know, show concern about the customer wants, needs, and desires. I used to do a listening presentation, just talk, 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 and sell, sell, sell. And I wouldn't, I, sometimes I didn't give them because I didn't know what the, what the, the seller, what, the, what their major wants are, what their needs are, what, you know, what happened before, especially with these buyers. You have to respond. Just to go in there and listen. To exactly, they'll tell you exactly what the agent they didn't do right that they weren't happy with. You know what? You say how you're gonna combat that. Do it differently. So basically, you go to expire uh, listing and get a presentation in front of the, the seller. They will walk you through everything you need to do to be successful, to make them happy, and get the property sold. Because they went through it once and they saw what they did. So that is all. We do. Have materials go in there, but listen. Because they'll. I'll tell you everything that went wrong. Uh, and again, we've got to look at an opportunity for expired. The second agent in, sometimes the third agent will expire. Reality steps in, and the, the, the work's easy. It's just all time again. Because basically, they know they got to reduce prices. So you, they're really not fighting about price. You know, they know what didn't work, so they don't expect to do all kinds of stupid advertising. It doesn't work. Like, you know, put it in, you know, you know reserve a quarter every single day. It's not going to do that. Uh, so again, so again, listen. But you know, we gotta know what their wants and needs are because those presentations. Uh, let's see. Next slide. All right. One more time, one more there we go. Visuals and inputs. So besides affirmations. Which is uncomfortable to get me one is starting off your day to you get in the right mindset. You know, this, you know, we could spend 10, 20 minutes in the morning. You know, we're going to talk about uh, scheduling our, our weeks and time. How I start my day, this might work for some of you, may not be the, be the last thing you guys do, but it helps me get through the day, the mindset, because we got everything coming from clients, the agents, the, the, the deals falling through. So, it, I mean, it, it's a constant barrage of. What's coming next? We got you know constant you know manager brokers you know saying this stuff. It, it, it never stops. And the way I get through that is I spend the first half hour every morning 
positive affirmations. I did my daily devotions. My company office was quiet. I did my daily devotionals. I opened the Bible. I spent about 15, 20 minutes in there. And I get them on signal. That, that's me. I mean, that, that's not going to work for everyone here. But if you spend 10, 20 minutes, you know, before day even starts, when you're quiet, you get out of bed, you lay out your day, plan it out, the positive attitude, forget everything in the past that happened yesterday, last night, people yelling at you, the old fell apart. Uh, you know, you got to move on. If you dwell on that stuff, you know, we have an entire agent I'm working with in here now who needs to get the business rolling. You know, one day, you kind of, you know, like, you know, I'm going to go here. They're banking on that money. You can't bank on that. So we heard the closing table, I checked your next week. Yesterday, I took, my, I took a $20,000 claim. Had a $16,000 commission check that the, the guy, the seller's backing out uh, right before closing. And then I had a deal that Karen for sure thought would get the offer accepted. It didn't accept it. You know, he's dumb about it. You know, if I was backing on that, I'd be dwelling on that. That would get me down. You know what? But there's more deals out there. If we want the next one, positive attitude, we got to get through it. It's, 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 it's 90% of this is the mindset. You, know, you think you just if you just that agent that whole week every time I saw him, I need, I need a ten thousand, I need a ten thousand. You know, you think you got shit done that week? You got nothing done that week to, to make up for it. It's just dwelling on it. You know, and, and it, we all do it. You know, I, I get you know derailed you know for an hour or two. You know, but that's it. You know, I don't get derailed for days. You know, I, I snap out of it. But that's conditioning. It's just like it's just like you know I get any like type of condition. You got to learn how to get out of that funk, or you will just small yes so you know you got a visualization you know for accessible career mental picture the, the desired outcome you got to set the goals and it's all you know again for me it starts in the morning you know that might be going to the gym in the morning it might be you know quiet time if you have to get up a half hour early uh just to you know get on the right mindset you know set you know set that and again a lot of this is in, in the, the miracle morning you know you know read that book and just kind of you know you can keep you know or you know paint a great picture simple changes change the whole whole career in life and, and plan for freedom. Uh, next screen. Next one. All right guys, so we're gonna fly through a lot of stuff. A lot of this for new for new agents. Uh, you know this is you know your what you need to get, you know, be successful, getting started and tools. Uh, but it's gives a good opportunity is we've got the back room set up for video and lighting that day. You guys, if you're not doing video, that's the number one thing is I'm not, I, I'm not comfortable on video. I, 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 I hate seeing myself on camera. I, I, who cares? If you don't get out of the comfort zone and start doing that today, you should be all back in that room just playing with the camera, just, just recording stuff. Nobody has to see it. Just, just start playing with it. Just start talking. Start, you know, get, get your, you know, your setup. And just even hit the button and sit down and getting comfortable is step one. I mean, you know, so you're not, you know, looking like a klutz, you know, you know. Melissa, again, I'm using a great example. Video clean. Amazing videos. And, 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 and it's generating her brand. It's getting in front of people. It, 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 it's helping her secure listings. She, there's listings out there now that are not listening. Melissa didn't even know that they're out there. Because they see her, they're going to list next, you know, spring or whatever. And they're going to call her. I've had two Facebook groups. Message. I want to say this next summer from my video. Oh, good for you. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. Mm. That's true. Your videos yeah. are good. Yeah, I mean, really, seriously, it's you're just like so funky. Not, no, I'm not. I do it ten times before I actually do it. That is not like live. I don't do live. Absolutely not. <laughs> but you know what? Next step is she. She like I guarantee within the you know by the beginning of next year she'll be doing all live. She won't need the five or ten days. But that's just the young know, game. It. It's a skill. You know. You know. It's, you got to practice it. 30, 60 days to make a new habit. we got to be doing videos every single day for the next 30, 60 days to get a habit of doing videos. Once it becomes a habit, you're going to feel guilty for not doing a video. If you, if you, you know you need to be doing it. Do you feel guilty for doing a video? Well, I'm actually working on my next video. Yeah, I feel weird that I haven't done it because, you know, you, you just, you, you think people are not going to want to listen to the same old thing. So you got to come up with something new, you know. I don't want to just like put it on and say, oh, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it's hard. It is hard to get comfortable with it. But the number one thing that we see out there are looking for is related to the comfort level of the person you know, that they want to do business with. Well, another thing from me starting to do doing these videos, like I'm involved with 
church. So now when I go to church, hey, go with the gold. <laughs> 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 this is a video. I love that video. If I was going to live, I'd just with you. See? They, it it's only a brand. I mean, I mean, it, it, again, that is number one. If you guys aren't doing videos, that should be a number one goal for next year is weekly videos of a tip, of a, of a, of a you know, whatever it may be, going to show in the house, you know, that, you know, going through one of your listings. It's, that is one of the most powerful things, and I ain't bad at it too. And I, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get my weekly calendar put together so I can start one more listing. But I know what works, but look at other agents out there super successful with the blind testing it. Right, his is great. His videos are really good. And, and he, he's a $20 million dollar producer. Basically, the majority of that is from videos and people that just see him on videos. Yeah. You know, they took on. Well, you know, he, he created a brand around his stupid little car. And his <laughs> 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 you don't even have to be really smart. No. They just <laughs> like your video. <laughs> <laughs> you might a brand like Brian never talks about houses. <laughs> <or computers. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, but people correlate the two. You know, Brian, he gets the cool hip, you know, the, the, the millennials, the, the, the luxury buyers, and the first ones to go out and drop a $200 car. Yeah, that's a nice example. That Mercedes. <laughs> 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 Mercedes. Yeah, that's a nice example. So, who has never attempted to do video? Who? A real estate video to Facebook trying to generate two. What's the question? Three. Who's never posted? Who's never posted? Who's never posted? Oh, yeah, no. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so the thing is, again, we gotta get out of the comfort zone. It's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. But the thing is, they don't expect to be perfect, and they when people see that you mess up. It just it just locks their their wall walls and barriers down. I mean, you know, Brian Tessie does a lot of live videos. He stumbles over words sometimes. You know, I you know, I post videos and stumble over words all the time. I mumble, I talk too fast. I mean, I'm not a good speaker, but I, I, I do it and it just you just get better over time. Yeah, so. I think that's the biggest thing. Most people they tell you you always talk too fast. Mm -hmm. It's either doing a presentation or doing a video. Like this. Yeah. It's just, just like, yeah. it, it takes practice and nerves. I mean, there, there's apps out there that I can't use them that actually have like the, the no, words you're no, scrolling no. up. I can never get the speed right. I'm always like, <laughs> 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 and, uh, I, no matter what speed I try, I can never do it. I just can't read off the screen. The but some so. people kick butt on a teleprompter and you just have an app. They don't know it. You do the video, they take practice. Make the teleprompter. Okay. Sound, you know, natural as can be, and then you know that might be you. But until you start going and practicing, you're not gonna know. So that's the main thing uh, when it comes to tools moving forward. Is uh, is again, we all know we have cell phones, laptops, and everything. But again, we're not going videos. Number one thing on our to do list. We should be starting today, getting back there, and you know, go with each other. You know, and help each other set the set the camera up in the room. You know, play with the lights. You know, learn how to use it. We're gonna get a background. We got a green screen back. Nobody's taking initiative yet to figure out how to put the green screen up and get cool graphics and real people on our house in the background. Just get your stuff with that room. I am tech talent. I don't know if anyone figured out. I'm lucky to get through the power presentation. I'm not going to be able to set up you know, that stuff. But, but it's here for us to use. The only person I've ever seen the room. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody else in the room. So I'm going to put her name on the room. Use that room. So, uh, next screen. <laughs> Uh, keep going, you don't know this stuff here. So again, ask yourself how your clients perceive your look. Again, one tip, you know, dress, uh, dress up, dress for your clients. Again, if you're creating your brand, be comfortable. Again, I, I wear cowboy boots. This is what I wear to $100,000 to $1 million dollars for This is, you're never, never going to get me more dressed up than this. And that's, take it or leave it. You know, I've had agents out there who complain about my dress and, you know, it's you. The point is being, it all comes down to being professional, creating your brand, and it takes time, effort, and daily, daily. This is, I didn't, I didn't 
take this to create a brand. Now, this is me, you know, but people expect me, you know, wear realty one group shirts and cowboy boots. Like Dean or Lindsay Cappy was yesterday, and I had a plan on she goes, Well, watch your people. I have never seen a better one. I do it because it's easy and brand. So again, it's your brand. Uh, again, simple stuff work, you know, freaking with water with all this stuff here. Uh, go to the next screen, Renee. Uh, one back one. You know, this is uh, one thing that I really take pride on. Pride in, in this area in, in, in Peters Township, like Canamac, is knowing the listings out there, knowing the price point of properties, and knowing what's on the market. You, you know, I was, you know, I had a couple from Louisiana stone houses uh, the last week. You know, four to six hundred thousand Peters Canamac range, and I don't, I'm at the, I, I don't share listings with clients. I, I tell them, listen, here's the MLS portal. I get set up on the MLS portal on a search. I said, all those things are in here. Here's my app. You can search and everything. Send me the property that you want to see, and then I'll, I'll line them up. I don't say, hey, look at this and look at that one. You know, because I, it's a waste of my time because they're gonna, we're gonna want to see what they want to see, and I don't want to you know, act like I'm trying to steer from one or the other. But when we're out and say we're looking, we looked at six houses on Sunday, but she bought up four of the houses that we didn't have on our list. But I knew when she brought them up, you know, about the property. I said, like, you know what, you know, that's in. You know, I, I, I'm terrible at plant names. I get all the plants confused, but I know where they are in, you know, Stonehenge or where, you know, or, uh, whatever one down B Bell is. I, I don't name the plant and say, hey, oh, yeah, down B Bell up here on that streets. I said, well, this house is, you know, typically, you know, th th this was a 540. I said, no price. I said, that, that house, you know, where it was, everything, and where it's about 4H, you know, but this time, you know, they just, knowing the property, knowing about it, being able to talk about it. Go so far for your expertise and professionalism to that client. You know, it, you know, again, you're not going to know all of them because things sneak through there. We're going to pull it up right now. But if you're not previewing the MLS, checking out where your major, most of your business are coming from, listening to the market, you got to start doing that. You know, uh, it, it's it's going to really uh, transform your communication with your clients. It all comes down to the referrals. You know, that client is, or you're working with. You know, they're going to talk to their friends and you know you, you know you should have this house you get this information you, you, you know you're going to be the expert in their mind i had another client i met yesterday for the first time uh that they were seeing other houses with other agents and again it's, it's just it's just doing our job you know how many agents you know you know we're all guilty out of it you know once in a while walking in you know she met they met a uh, the agent met them out showed them a house and so the agent says oh good you know, have a look around here just let me get you you know I've done it before, you know, just you're kind of getting, but that's not, I, I met them, took them around the house, pointed out some things. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't sell the house, I just point out things and, and talk about, you know, price and, and, and the area and, and value. And like, you know what, you know, we're, we're, you're gonna be our go-to because you actually, you know, invest, yeah. you actually acted interested. You just acted interested, you know, how many agents, I don't know how many they went out to before, just, you know, I'm interested, just open the doors and just let them go. You know, we just, you know, just that one little simple thing, that you know, especially if you're doing online lead generation, these people are meeting two, three, four, half dozen agents. You gotta you you gotta act like the expert and knowing the inventory, take time each day to preview active listings is, is the first step. I know the majority of people are doing that. How about if you have um, if you're working on areas, like not in one area? Like I'm all over the place. Yeah, yeah but, but, Again, you, you, you can't know every single area, but you know, if there's one area that you know stands out that you want to start working in and get more in, or you, I mean, there, you know, even if you have you know done three deals in this area, that one over here, you focus on the ones where, where you're more likely to pick up somebody <laughs> from right. referrals. You know, you That's close right. deals in that area. You, you need to know what's going on in, in those areas. You know, I, I want to get, uh, you know, downtown, you know, East Liberty, you know, around the Baker Street office. It's a huge opportunity. You know, I, that. I don't know anything going on down there. That's a different world. You know, price points change so drastically. You know, if you want to get in that market, you got to spend more time in learning because it's, it's, you know, like the, you know, when this thing we're talking about with the nation, Squirrel Hill, a million dollars. And that street, you know, is not one of the most desirable streets in Squirrel Hill. But if you put that house on, you know, this street, it's still in two days. You know, so you got to know these things that you want to work in those areas uh, and be able to get a time to invest in those. So, 
literally, it, this is one thing we all can get better at. We all kind of neglect time to learn what's going on in the market because we're used to our, our, our buyers, you know, coming to us saying, hey, I want to see this property, go up the door and, and make them off. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I do too. Because, like, you can literally, I'll put the MLS app and I'll just see Allegheny South and you can, I'll just kind of be able to see, like, yeah. check what popped up that day instead of like having to go on your computer and check, or I'll just do Allegheny. If it's an area I don't know, I always like before I go on the appointment, we'll look at other comps or like what's around or like what, what school. I hate when they ask what school is it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. What am I just pull that shit? You know, like that. I always look up the school because everybody asks that. And then, of course, you look it up and they don't do it. At least you know it. Mm -hmm. When everybody's, when everybody, when you guys meet a buyer for the first time, what materials do you take? What do you get? Business card and the appointment card. Yeah. Typically, consumer notice. What did you say that? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. 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 How many listings do you guys go into without the disclosure with? No paperwork in the listing. Do so you guys take a disclosure with you? The trouble I've been running into is they're, they're not available either on site or at least the date you have the Well, there's a lot of time listing. I mean, I, that's, that's but again, what I've been running into. Yeah. yeah. And you breach yeah. yeah. out the listing yeah. ATS. You say, you know, step you. you know, I, I look when I schedule for showing is, is the disclosure on there? It's not a massive yeah. yeah. there's, there's some of our, well, some of the open houses I've worked that same thing's happened. I mean, I, more properties are going to not have no, no materials right. whatsoever. Nothing, no. Uh, so I take disclosure, the MLS printout sheet of property we're in. Do you guys take active listings at the same price point, same thing? Do they, they pass know. sold comps that's closed in the last 180 days as well? I have that one. Like I'll do that the first time I meet with somebody, just to get to know them and see what they're looking yeah. for. And then the second time we go look, then I'll just do the MLS printout. Exactly. Yeah. Then I'll look at the disclosures yeah. and write my own notes. Yeah, so that's again, that, I'm talking mm -hmm. first impression. Mm -hmm. I, I think a folder with what they want to see, the disclosure, as many, you know, because there's three or four comps, I take those as well. Because again, why, the first time meeting, usually have one listing, one, one property show lined up. I'm trying to get the next <laughs> appointment scheduled while I'm meeting that buyer, because if I don't get them lined up for something else, they're going to be on Zillow or Realtor. They're clicking here, the agent taking them here. So I, I am bringing active listings that they resemble what we're in to try to get them committed to the second show. And that's why you get a buyer agency to do that. The second show. If you just go and show them and say, hey, you see anything else? Give me all holler. Then you're, you're never going to come back. You know, so that's why I take the active. I also take the call, like the ones that are under contract and pass sold. I've had so many buyers out here. It's like, I don't know. Nobody's ever getting all the information. And then we can talk price. We can talk, you know, where this house should sell it for. Again, Give, you know, giving, you know, showing your knowledge, showing your, you know, you know what you're talking about is beating eight out of ten agents out there whenever you buy buyers are meeting them. So, I feel like I do a buyer presentation like at the house site, you know, and they're like, okay, let's go through the process. And depending on if they, it's like mostly first time home buyers, I'm like, because mm -hmm. they'll start to ask questions. That's when you're like, yeah. you know, you know, it's like, sure, we'll ask this to you, but so we yeah, I mean, especially with millennials. Yeah. If you don't lock them down and give some schedule on the calendar, I mean, they're all over the place. Never gonna see them. Oh, you need to get Sorry. Talking price, and you know, I mentioned buyer agency agreements. How many people in the room get their buyer on a buyer agency agreement? A couple. Anybody in the room afraid to, to talk about a buyer agency agreement? Anybody been burned by not having a buyer agency agreement? <laughs> we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about setting boundaries, running your business, saying <laughs> 
to how your business is going to run, how you're going to set your weekly schedule. And it all starts around a buyer agency agreement. When you have that buyer agency agreement, now you dictate when you're going to show properties. You, you don't really have to jump, you know, because you, you, if you have a buyer agency agreement, I mean, we all done it. They, they, you're, you're going to build something, a buyer calls, hey, I want to see this house tonight. And they go, oh, I better show them. I, I mean, I, if I don't show them, else, I'm going to lose them. And now your whole damn afternoon or evening is gone because you jumped one buyer because you're buyer agency agreement. That buyer agency agreement, again, we're, I don't know where, why we haven't had a real estate agents that we got to jump on a buyer or sellers that jumped. But think about it. Everything we ever stood before in our own lives, did we ever expect to get my first appointment? Never. And I don't care if you call the dentist, the doctor, or, you know, the haircut, whatever it may be. We don't, we have an ideal time. You know, I'd love to go tomorrow at noon. But more probably not going to happen, especially if the person's good at what to do, you know. So we're, we're good at what we do. We should, you know, that's the conversation. Well, hey, I'm booked up here, you know, I'm not going to be able to show you that house until, you know, tomorrow. I, I, I you know, know the market. If the house is going to be there next month, you don't got to jump there at 6 o'clock tonight. night. You know, but if it's out market, I mean, there's, there's certain exceptions. You know, one of my things is, you know, erase it, replace it. We'll talk about that means. We, we, we gotta go. We better, we better get there because it's not gonna be there tomorrow. You know, those situations arise. We get it, but majority of the time, seventy five percent of the time, the property's not gonna go anywhere. But we're gonna screw up our whole damn afternoon, day, morning for one property that we might even get our contract. Especially if we know if that buyer is not gonna. That's not for them. But again, they're just wasting my time, their time. You know, we we, we know what ahead of time. I mean, we can kind of predict. You know, what properties they're gonna be getting ultimately using it. But we jump and show properties with our buyer's agreement that we're gonna lose them. So. We'll talk about that, you know, work with one-on-one with you, you know, how I, you know, go over the buyer agency agreement, how I present it, uh, how I convey value around it, uh, and we'll work on getting that. I mean, that, that's, that one thing, you know, there will, will free up the majority of the week, uh, especially if you do a lot of buyers, work with a lot of buyers. Simple as that. Uh, I have a question on that. Huh? Um, how would you ever know if you had an agreement with somebody, they sort of drop off, if they actually just still went with another agent, unless you're checking the, you know, the server border, you know, the, you know, the NIST area, the, the, the real estate sections. A lot of times you won't. They drop off, you know, if it's you can't catch everybody. And a lot, a lot of times it's, you know, make sure we, again another good point here. This past week, know how to fill out buyer agency agreement. Correct. We have the agent in the office last week said, hey, you know what? I just saw this. this Buyer model with another agent, they have a house contract, close the year, have a buyer agency agreement. You know, so we just made this fight, this fight for it. You know, you know, that's that's why it's there. You, you know, it's gonna be a battle, but that's one of our job is, is to try to enforce the buyer agency agreement, try to get you know all the commission out there somehow. I said send me a buyer agency agreement, don't drop off. Oh my god. And he did every single one he's done, he's done wrong, but until we go to enforce it, he gets it, he just doesn't come in and won't go to people with us. You know, now he's out. How do you fill that out wrong? Yeah. He, he puts, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, where, it's, where it says you know, you put the, the commission, like two and a half percent, if you're represented by a broker, two and a half percent commission, and or, you know, whichever, greater, or whatever. He left the, the commission blank, and on one of the lines, he wrote and, or, and or, he wrote the 395 mm -hmm. admin fee. So all I have remember was the 395 admin fee. So basically, I said, that this, how you have this, I can fight for greater $95. Because this states all of the first knows you is three ninety five. It's all right. I mean, it's, it's, so uh, just reinforce to make sure we know we're covering building out things right because our mm -hmm. first cost goes to protect the buyers and sellers. Uh, we want to protect our income. And that's what buyer agency agreement does. Again, not got a guarantee. We're going to get it, but we have something to fight for. It. Without it, we have no chance. It's not a good, good buy. So. Uh, I am the biggest advocate in terms of getting that signed, practice it. Some buyers won't sign it. Now, I'll give you a perfect example. You know, I, the biggest deal last year was 1.2. The buyers refused to sign buyer agency agreement. We had a relationship. They never seen a few properties. It's one, you know, and, and ultimately got it closed. Everything worked well. But, you know, you'll, you know, am I going to turn down opportunity? I don't know. I mean, if it's, you know, if I wait a couple hours on that, I think that's no big deal. But if, you know, it's, it's, it's you got to get more buyers and sellers start working with, you'll start kind of, you know, kind of knowing where it's going to go. If you've got to worry about things, what you do, is it worth, you know, going into it? Is it worth showing the house without pre-approval? You know, up front, we talk to somebody on the phone. You know, I, I, I'd say, you know, 
90% of the time I get it right based on the questions I ask. You know, they don't have pre-approval, kind of how the conversation goes, the done process before they know what they're talking about, kind of the, the education of you know, level I perceive the person talking to. Then I'll pre-approve, well, I'll, I'll meet them out at the house and, and then you know, build that relationship and then get them pre-approved after the first showing. You know, that's the thing I, you know, again, not pre-approved, like the fire agency agreements and the pre-approval talked about and out of the way before the next second test. You know, did they, did they going above and beyond showing trust, showing expertise, they realize, you know, real estate agents, we're, we're the second most untrusted profession in the country because the people out there are just, you know, are deceiving people, lying to people. You know, it is, so you gotta, you gotta break these barriers down and then and, and connect with them with quick, fast, and that first meeting or you're gonna lose them because we're gonna be putting on somebody else. Uh, so uh, we'll go through all that together. You know, this is, you know, I would like to sit down individually one-on-one, -on -one, go through everything, uh, custom it to what you're comfortable with. Not, you know, my school is not gonna be, you know, is gonna be comfortable with what I say and or, you know, or Ray is gonna be comfortable with how I do it. And, and again, when we sit down one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna learn how she does it and maybe get fire ATV agreements signed that I didn't get signed before because of how she presented it. So again, that's all gonna be with the accountability partners when I'm working this stuff together, you know, move, move forward. So next slide, I think we're at a break here. Uh, we'll grab a drink. I'm gonna talk about one, one, one thing uh, before we, get, we take a five, 10 minute break here. You guys, be happy. You, you saw the emails, Cash Mortgage is uh, one of our affiliates out of Westwood office. Uh, Cash Mortgage is starting uh, basically kind of like a stock ownership program. You can invest in cash uh, mortgage. It's it's all covered in here. You have to commit to give them uh, one transaction a month or 12 per year, uh, kind of a profit share ownership. Uh, it's $660 buy in or whatever. Uh, if everybody does their, pulls their weight, does their 12 deals per year, you know, we'll. Return and everything played out here is is four is about five thousand profit share in the first year, about four hundred forty dollars a month profit share for ten people bought it. If you can't if, if you can't do twelve yourself, part of it is this. You know, uh, look at you know look it over. Uh, we're gonna be launching. We're gonna be launching this in February. So again, I uh, use them for two deals now. They're great, phenomenal. Uh, they actually, my one buyer works for NBR. They actually got a kill on NBR as employee, you know, rate and discount and everything for my buyer. So this is up here if you guys want to check it out. So take a break. Grab one of these if you want. Uh, learn about cash mortgage. Uh, they're going to do another presentation in here in their office. Uh, Kurt and Scott. Uh, that's about five minutes, ten minutes, guys. We'll dive back into it. All right, right here, guys. Work on your own positive affirmation. Break it down one, make up your own, and you can sort of stay with it. You want to focus on that. So that's one of the action plans today is to create your own affirmation. So, Mike, that line on the bottom of your agency agreement where it says 395, you're supposed to put 2.5 or 3% plus 395. I write on a lot of other, you know, where you're going there. He wrote it on, you know, he said, Yeah, pull one up. Yeah, pull one up. I'll show you where he wrote it. Did you, like, uh, I never write, and I use um, three, here's, here's how I present myself is, I explain to him, again, what it's all about, and I always say, you know, this is, I, write, I always put two and a half percent, I, you know, I, I, know, I get paid by the seller, you don't owe me anything mm -hmm. on the buying side of seller pays the commission, but I put two and a half percent here, because if I took three percent here, I would use like a middle Oh, you did? Yeah. If I just educate you, you me crazy. I said, if I put three percent here, and that seller is only offering seven percent, how does this bring? I can go back to you and say, you have to be five percent. I said, there is out there too. I was always trying to have that. Yeah, like seriously, that gave me a lane. I was like, half time, I turned on the thing. I just had a feeling they were going to be there. Yeah, that was bad. They were going to be there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be there. With that, that's my first time. I mean, we're going to be there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to be there. You just try to get them back. So you always put two and a half in there? It doesn't matter. Because if you're getting paid anyway. Yeah, you can do the trip back. Oh, I know. I don't understand. I don't understand how. But I use it as uh, you know, San Diego. I don't like different than LA. LA gave up that many points. This is 
it's not that this could have support. Tyreek Hill burned the guy. He can't cover yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. For whatever reason, they had a corner on him one-on-one. -on -one. He ran like a down the drag route. Like by Sammy Watkins. Yeah, oh, Sammy Watkins was like their third three. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy. And then when they started doubling uh, the hill, they just started doubling the hill. I don't know. Unreal. See, I just always put Unreal. in their seller yeah. pays buyers. Is it Sammy Watkins? Yeah, it's Sammy Watkins. And I think it yeah. eases their minds. Like, okay, the seller pays. They don't even think about it. Chelsea? Yeah. Yeah. Cover, yeah. I mean, yeah. too big. He's too big, man. Andy can run. And they got, and they got, uh, Let's stay out of the back. So, yeah. Yeah. He said, I don't feel any of that. Out. It's to me, playmakers. Okay, that's probably the best game of the year. You see, Alex is. Rough. Oh, he's awesome. I guess I like. 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 I it's trying to win this thing. It's still like 13 years old. They're talking about how he's going like match with Coach Andy Reid. Andy Reid's like 60 something. So the coach is all going to do it a lot. Yeah, exactly. They all play the best of both my best. It's great. He's got skill. He's got a great skill set. Yeah, he's got a great skill set. Yeah, he's got a great skill set. So should I put plus two and a half percent on five? I just write it right there for the there. Right here. 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 Right Especially first time home buyers, it crush. You pay no commission to buy a house. The seller pays my commission. So the idea of this, how this is written, I put two and a half percent here because two and a half percent is the lowest, you know, buyer side commission on the lowest. I said, but you know, a lot of agents put three percent on here, and how this is written is they can come back to you at closing and say, you know, the seller is only offering two and a half. You owe me that 0.5 percent difference, so we signed a buyer agency agreement for three percent. There's agents out there to collect that 0.5 percent from the buyers. So that just again, if it's three percent commission, you're still going to get three percent from the seller. From the seller, doesn't that doesn't mean that you're taking less commission on, on the listing because they have no idea what you signed. And you're never saying that to the to the, uh, to the seller, to the closing company, <laughs> your, your, your commission statement. But I, I use this. Listen, you know, so this is to protect you, you know, and it's just for future reference, or if you any buyer, any friends or family are buying, to protect them, that you can explain to them again, uh, you know, what happens out there, and sometimes costs you know buyers money. They're on it's it, it just separating yourself, showing them something of value, showing how you're protecting them, how you're different, why you're better. Uh, these little little conversations. Uh, yeah, we're not putting down the competition. We're not making up stuff that happens out there that they can do every, every day. And a lot of buyers, they, they surprise the buyers. They, they don't cover with them. But on the closing disclosure, what's this be for? Oh, we have a 3% buyer agency giving you know, You owe me this. They collect it and move on. I, I, I had these buyers who give me these stories. You know what? I don't know anything about this. It, it cost me you know, $1,000 out of pocket to buy this house because my agent charged me that. And then they're pissed. And then they're going to the call. But you know, it happens all the time. I got a question. What do you do if you have an agent that won't stop calling you every day, like three times a day? <laughs> 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 Just an take an answer. Yeah. <laughs> like, huh? Well, yes, yeah, like you have a deal with him, and every time you send him an email, he calls you three times until you pick 18 up. Times. Like, eight, yeah, not 20 times. And he leaves you like a voice about six minutes long. Another one's five. They talk to you for 20 minutes. How do you just be like, dude, leave me alone? And you can't. I tried. I literally. You know what I'm talking about. That's fine. And it was the happiest day of my life when the deal fell through because he wasted so much money. Can I answer this? Transaction. No, he'll call you anyway. I tried everything. I was like, please call my assistant. Please call. Didn't matter. It was terrible. He calls me and tells me there's no update. Like, you yeah, call no me and be like, for 15 yeah. minutes, you'd be like, yeah. nothing's got that same thing as yesterday. You leave the voicemail like, you're on the phone with him anyway. And you're like, yeah. he talks to himself. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So he has to shoot Texas and not call me. I don't know how I'm talking to you. He's 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 you got it. Sometimes you talk to him. Yeah, but you don't. He's like nice, so you don't make me do him. So good. Did I say my buyer? Yeah, I'm not paying for it. I'm so happy to get that out. I would 
send them the voicemails and be like, can you deal with this? Because I can't. I just can't. I'm not kidding. This guy calls me three times a day. At least the voice notes every time. Yeah. Like six right, guys, we're going to start here again. I memorized his phone number just from one of the texts. He didn't call me and I would see it on my screen. I don't know if he does it well. I don't know. I mean, I know. he tells me he's an expert in that area. So he told me so many times. Was it like Canterbury area? No, he's in like, uh, it's like Oakdale. Oh. Um, he says he's been selling in that plan for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> every every conversation. <laughs> I don't even know, honestly. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to talk about building our business up. All right, so we're going to talk about our database. If anybody is absolutely the worst database, it's me. I have their database. I'm going to admit it. I, I suck at this, so this is more for me for accountability. I need you guys to keep me accountable because I don't do any of this. I do all prospecting. The Dion's database, Queen, the fortunes in your database. You should be able to get, you know, they say 10% of your database you will do a transaction per year. If you have 100 in your database, you can go 10 deals. And if it's properly nurtured, work, communicate. So this, this will drastically change your income, your business, by working your database. So, the four rules, we gotta feed it. We gotta add new contacts to our database daily, we gotta nurture it, we gotta maintain it, and we gotta do it daily. You know guys, we have, uh, Moxie works as CRM in the zone. Uh, you know, I have a tech challenge. I, I couldn't log in Moxie work today, Moxie work. It's a dumb as hell, right? But, you know, again, I'm bad at this. I'm gonna be first minute, Dion's good at it, there's other CRMs out there. There's no right or wrong CRM. The only bad CRM is the CRM you don't use. So there's so many CRMs out there that you can spend a week doing previews and demos. Find a CRM, learn the ins and outs of it, that you can work it effectively. Know everything about it. You can do it quickly and does everything you need to do and stick with it. You quit looking for better, bigger changes. You know, we have BS agents who just everyone want to change systems all the time. Oh, I just found this system. How about this system? Just stick to one and use one thing, and that's the first thing. Uh, but again, we gotta we gotta feed daily, we gotta add new contacts, and we gotta, you know, do a little kind of uh, homework around who do we create a database around? Who is who should be in our database? Uh, the handouts. Your circle of influence worksheet here. There is 145 questions on here to get people's names. And there's also a sheet here where you can start writing the names, the contact information, the cell phone, the email address on here to start building your database. If we would just take the time literally and spend a morning going through our phone and reaching out and connecting people and having a real estate conversation, everybody you talk to, you meet, you, you run into, after the pleasantries, there should be a real estate conversation, a real estate question asked. Again, the biggest thing is don't be a secret agent. How many people of your, how many friends or acquaintances do you see is, oh, I bought the house. Why, why didn't you call me? Well, I forgot you were an agent. You know, it happens all the time. Why didn't you think about it? Shit, I was just with dinner with you a month ago. You know, you know why didn't you think of it? And so, unless we're constantly telling people what agents, have a real estate conversation, we're gonna miss deal. We're gonna, we're gonna miss <clears throat> the opportunity that somebody we know had a conversation the day before, week before with their neighbor about buying or selling. So my question is, you know, hey, hey Joe, uh, you know, John, how's it going? You know, great to see you, you know, what's, what's new? You know, nothing new. Nothing new. Not too much money, sorry. Uh, I've got my answer and I have one there. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.
Hey, uh, I'm John Molly gave me your number. You know, my name's Mike Hanley. He said, you know, he's talking to me that day. He might be looking to buy or sell a house. You know, we thought that that one sentence, you do that with every individual we meet over the next quarter of a year. How many transactions do you think we can come up on a bad year? Four, five, six? Just having that conversation? It's, it's, it's training. It's, it's, it's habit building, it's repetition, it's lifestyle. I know. <laughs> I know I try to do that all the time, but one thing that kind of deters me sometimes from saying anything is like, I feel like, especially with Facebook, because you know, we try to use Facebook as much as we can, is like, I feel like everybody's selling something. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Right. This, this, and this I is feel a like, personal conversation. Right? Yeah, so, so that's true, but I just, I sometimes I just feel like, you know, a lot of, you know, friends that I know are selling, you know, nail stuff or mm -hmm. lipstick or you know Oil. anything like that so when i see them they're you know having mm -hmm. that and so okay, change your mindset you're thinking yeah. you're selling something you're asking a question you know yeah. everybody looking to buy or sell just yeah. you're not having to host a party for you you're yeah saying, this, 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 this <laughs> have a party with all your friends i want to see if anyone's buying or selling yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true yeah you know, that's what, yeah that's what you do yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, what we're going to do is, again, accountability. We're going to get a, a big poster board with our names on here, and we're going to keep our week, weekly stats. We come in next week, and we're going to talk about what we're going to track. Oh, yeah. It's uncomfortable, right? Yeah. We're, we're going to keep you accountable. You're tonight, everybody's squirming in the seat right now. Like, shit, you know, we're actually going to check on it. Yeah, we're going to check on it. Yeah, what the hell is going to be in there? Give you a perfect example. This simple conversation. Do you know anybody looking to buy or, buy or sell real estate? I was in bold. The other one was training last year. One guy in bold, you know, made it his action plan. Everybody he meets, everybody's around, he's going to ask that conversation. Next week he came back in, he had three listing appointments. He was in a grocery store line. Turn around, hey, I'm John. You know, oh, you know, I'm going to my car. You know, you know anybody looking to buy or sell? He did it all week long, two listing appointments next week. You know how many listings he did the year before? Zero. He had no listings, and he just had a simple conversation. He had three people that met and wanted to be with him for a listing. This is that is not, not like we're looking for that special, you know, needle in the haystack trick to want to get all these deals. Realty one on our car is not enough. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, it's, it, it, it's uncomfortable. Who's comfortable turning around and in the line introducing yourself and handing cards? I'm not comfortable. But I know damn well I'd probably get that deal next year. Depends on how I'm dressed that day. Yeah, yeah. 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 That is, that's how that's how we that's how we feed our database is going through this, thinking of everybody you know, spending a day just going and reconnecting with people on your phone, having a conversation with everyone. One day bold, we had a two hour break, we went outside and we had called through our phone. And asked them if they had had a house or whatever they bought. If people came in and had had requests from that from that two hour. Please don't make us. <laughs> no, if we had all people doing these all day sessions, I would say you know, two hours, lunch break, call for your call for your phone. Just call for hundred people. You can't be called for hundred people. Guarantee, you know, the statistics show that you should, you should be able to give one, you know, lead appointment, you know, set up of a hundred phone calls. So we just we just gotta take that and multiply it. And let it Build our business. So, guys, get a CRM. If you don't want to use a CRM, use a spreadsheet. Get, you know, this is how real estate is designed for agents. People have, you know, the, the Rolodex, you know, cards. I mean, whatever works for you. We need to start building our database. We need to start nurturing it. You know, now with, you know, the neighborhood news, on our, you know, Moxie Works neighborhood news. Every one of my leads that come in, you get on that. It's twelve. It's a once a month drip campaign. We're just staying in front of them. This stuff's automated. But the, the, the thing is, we got to create systems. We got to put the systems in place. We've got to work on them. And we've got to get in here. Let's talk about touch campaign. How many times you should call? How many times you should write notes? How many times you should, you know, throughout the year? Read, read it, apply it. The trick to create changeable. Honestly, again, and get me, I'm the worst. And this is my action plan is to actually get my database down. Uh, and start working. So this circle of opportunity, you know, hand out here. This is, that's how I look at the Mike. Uh, they exist all around you all the time. 
you know, uh, this is our primary model we're going to use in the areas of success in real estate career to help identify traditional sources of business while blending and integrating other opportunities based on your personal life and core values. So your inner circle, guys. Next screen, Renee. Your inner, inner circle here. These are of your, of your you know, database or the people you're connected with. You know, these are people you've done business with, you know, high closed transactions with, the, uh, you know, professionals you work with on a daily basis. You know, this is your inner circle. These are the ones we should have our closest relationships with. We should be nurturing. We should be going out, taking them out to lunch, having coffee with them. We got to stay, you know, in front of these people because this inner circle is the number one source of referral business. That's your past one. Lucia does the majority of her business from referrals. We talked about going to plan appreciation party, you know, uh, big burden before spring, and poor people, you know, kind of get crazy busy in the new year just to connect. That's one touch. We should be touching them people 11 other times throughout the year minimum. You know, personal handwritten notes. Uh, hey, you know, it's just, it's, we'll see if it's thinking about you. You know, is anything, you know, you need? Can I, can I help you with anything? You know, it's great work like this. Thanks for whatever. It's, it's going above and beyond taking the time to nurture our, our most connected inner circle where we generate those business. Then we have the, the connected, you know, middle, the middle circle is the people we know, we haven't done business with them. You know, we haven't, uh, nobody ever referred us anything. We like to do business with them. We want to build relationships with them. Same thing, we've got to nurture them, we've got to work with them, we've got to network with them. And this is not just business professionals, this is their friends that we haven't seen in a while, or you know, our relatives, cousins. You know, these people, you know, you, you already have a level of trust with them. You just got to keep constantly reminding them that they're real estate. Keep having that opportunity to have that question. Hey, do you end up looking to buy or sell? If they live in a, they live in a plan, you know, if they're, you know, white or if they're, you know, just they're, you know, social on the plan, they're going to know who's going to buy or sell before anybody else out there. But if you don't ask them that question, they're never going to know miss it. So uh, then the not connected. You know, these are all opportunities all around us. These, these are the, the people behind us in the grocery store. These are uh, the person taking your order at Starbucks. You know, these, these, are, these are just people we have interactions with on a daily basis uh, that you know, can hand a simple card to you and say, hey, you're going to buy yourself? You ever think about buying a house? Good house it's, a, it's a simple question, and it's a conversation. People like to talk about real estate sometimes. I mean, sometimes I, you know, I've, I've done real estate conversations. I don't know how it even happens with, with people out there, and you're talking for eight, twenty minutes, you know, about real estate. And it's we got to get out of our, get out of our minds that we're selling something, that we're being pushy, that that we're, you know, irritating or annoying this person. Even if we are pushy, you know, that person behind me could be a, it could be a ten thousand dollar commission check. If I don't, if I don't ever going to know, but I'll ask them. Or their neighbor would be selling, you know. So if you look at this opportunity and what you're passing up, you look at it as I am not achieving my big why if I don't do these things. I, I'm never going to get to my big why. I'm never going to get to the freedom. I'm never going to get to my goals if I don't get out of my comfort zone and, and have these conversations. And again, and it only takes one, once, once one comes to fruition and you see it and, and it manifests itself to a deal, now the, the, the challenge is keep doing it. A lot of times we do things that succeed and get deals from, and then I ask them, you know, why did you, why did you do it anymore? Right? You know, we didn't. We didn't make it a habit. We didn't make it, you know, a lifestyle. We, we didn't put the time, effort to, to make it part of our routine. We know it works, but we don't stick to it, and we're missing all You know, you know, again, if, if if talking, you know, to strangers, you get four deals. Now, if I talk to twice as many strangers, should I get eight deals? You know, it's, it's simple. Just take it on the top So, database is huge. Uh, you know, and then next screen is just a blank one. We're not going to take time here to fill this in and make you do it here. You know, you got the worksheet, do it at home. Uh, come back in next week. I want to see that sheet. I want to know what names on it. And it's our accountability. There's no point of being here if I'm not going to have to give you homework, check on you. Because, uh, guys, like I said, if we apply these things, there's no way that each of us is not going to go more deals next year. No way. There's, there's no way there's going to be somebody that's going to have a dozen deals uh, in the next six weeks uh, by just doing these things. So do these at home. This is homework. You might not take time and break through it. Uh, next next slide just talks about uh, in your CRM uh, adding contacts to it. Anybody have a CRM that they use outside of Moxie Works? They want to share, they love, they use. 
I just bought my I just bought one that was just a card reader and it's putting it in. Just into, get it yeah. It gives I I got boxes full of cards that I never yeah. did anything with. Think 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 of your sphere. Right? Yeah. You know, your, your, your your database is just reading some of the, mm. wow. the cards that lay around. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a great great start. Yeah, grab every always ask for someone's business card. They love it. You know, they're mm -hmm. you're asking for their card and it just is great for adding your database. Whether you're having real estate conversations or not, I mean, just get everybody to the card you can. And, and there, there, there's a letter from all these handouts here. It's kind of like a reconnection letter. And, and it's kind of, it, it's just being honest. It, it, it's a reconnection letter. Say, hey, you know what? I know I dropped the ball. You know, I have been in contact with the ship with you. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a step next year to, to, to be a better agent, to build more relationships, to reconnect with, with past clients. And that's why I'm reaching out. I mean, being free of coming any kind of letter, be honest. Hey, I know I suck to talk to you. I didn't talk to you for a year, but now I'm reaching out now. Let's get together. Let's reconnect. And especially Jamie with all the professional and business relationships, you know, that, that's an easy conversation with, with that, those uh, business cards. It's just saying, you know, the top ones, you know, the, the, the high money ones or the ones, you know, that have multi million dollar billings or whatever it may be. That's a camera note. Just take just what we're talking about talking, where this fits into your schedule. Take this top 12, 10, 20, write a handwritten note. Just say, hey, you know what? It was a pleasure meeting you a year and a half ago. I know I sucked at communication. I wish you know we could have got to lunch. Let's just let's reconnect. Just be honest. I mean, it, it's that's all it is to it. Don't, don't have a hidden agenda. How about the uh, CRM, that Realty John Miller right there? I yeah. it on there. It's mm -hmm. hundred dollars a year. Um, Jordan, you've been trying it. Have you been loading stuff in there? Yeah, it's good. So I the I've downloaded that. Are incredible. Like you can just do all your categories, your form, all of your areas. <laughs> Plus, they have over a hundred templates already built in. So like already I set up my Thanksgiving email, it went out yesterday. I set up my Christmas email. It's so user friendly for $100 a year. And um, you can add up to 5,000 contacts in there. So it's called Real Team Jungler. And um, I just think you guys, if you're looking for something outside of Moxie, because Moxie is good for the neighborhood news. They're going to be at the beginning of the year, add some email campaigns, but this already has it and you guys can get started. Especially when the slow time, it's a great time to build that. I just wanted to, I've heard that, I've heard that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just downloaded that, but I was using Top Producer, which I wasn't using because it's so confusing. I, I, I need to cancel it. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, guys, there, there, there's CRMs out there that are so damn robust that you need a, you know, a, yeah. a degree to, 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 to work. Yeah. 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 I, I can't add you know, input here because I think. Uh, but, but the point is, find one, talk to each other. Once you get one, if you love it, share it with a group on Facebook. Help the other people get you know, on the right track with, with a database. Um, Renee, can you go over to says build database? One more right here. Here. So, uh, one more. I use the this one? No, keep on board. No, you're on the board. Okay, here we go. Like I said, so send an introduction letter, follow the phone call, ask for referrals, have a real estate conversation. But here, you know, I have it written here, but kind of like a like an experienced agent trip to reconnect. It's like some of those long lines. As you know, I've been building a real estate business with a wealthy one group in your area and have made an exciting decision to take my business to the next level. And I can use your help. I apologize if I've been somewhat remiss in staying in touch with you. And that is the first part of my commitment to taking my business to the next level. I'm developing systems and building a team of specialists. You know, to help my clients take their level of experience, to deliver the very best in my clients, expect using latest tools and technology to ensure joys and stuff to take transaction. If you hear of anyone from work, school, gym, church, that may be thinking of buying or selling uh, real estate, please consider referring me. I'll be in touch with you soon to follow up and look forward to helping you and anyone you know with real estate needs. Thanks for thinking of it. You know, send them, um, let me out long, it could be an email, then you gotta follow the phone call. You know, here, this is again, the, the, the problem is we all have good intentions. We'll sit down, break the phone, handwritten notes, send them out without a system or plan in place, without following up the next in two days, see if they got the handwritten notes, saying a point to the meeting with other one. We gotta have our strategic plan in place because we just, you know, just wait one day, I'm gonna send 12 cards. We don't, we don't consciously sit down, game plan around, and think about the next steps. We just sent 15 cards, maybe a year before we reach out again. And it's not gonna, not gonna. Most of the time, I don't know if 
card and you send it to everyone or you can pick different cards. Like I did my Thanksgiving cards already. Um, I did it for a guy that just closed last week and the year already got the cards that you do Christmas cards and that's like you can do campaigns. I don't I haven't set it up but you can do it where it's basically sending someone a card every month. So it's like I don't know, I just thought it's called send out cards, but it's actually um if you actually do it for a plan, I think, because that's just your practice instead of sitting there every month. I I use it too and a good thing that you can do with it is put your own pictures in there. So if I yeah. see somebody on Facebook that they just found out they're pregnant or they just got engaged or they just got married, you can take that picture and put it on the front of that car and send it out to them. And I mean that's fantastic if it's cheap. I've gotten one from other people, yeah, whenever like we're getting engaged, I got one and I saved it for a long time that I've never worn one like that. Thank you. Yeah. Like it's like it yeah. looks so nice and I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I don't want to save this number because I because nobody yeah. else is doing that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Like so without a plan of the next step, the next step after that, and laying it all out. It's gonna fall through the cracks, and, and um, I just we just did it. We were at our last party at the Strange Roots. I wrote a lot of handwritten notes out to agents, personally inviting them. Did I follow up with all the agents on this? No. We just fell through the cracks. I know I would have followed up every agent to have a conversation with. I could have got more appointments for recruiting, and then things could have been a lot more productive than it was. But just doing the one step, you know, you're going to, it's going to it can generate something. We had we had an agent that uh, contacted me from my handwritten. On Facebook, said, "Hey, I got your card. I don't know what the hell it says because the handwriting is so sloppy. Oh, but uh, nice. you know, sound like sound like free beer. You know what's up? You know, a twenty million dollar producer came to the party. We're kind of you know building our relationship up. Hopefully, in the next two thousand nineteen, he comes over really good one. But you know, it was that handwritten card that got the you know we just sent him an email or text and we got that response. It happened to be that I had the sloppiest handwriting. You know, he was kind of just, you know, just having a little, little fun, but." Uh, it's building that that's one that could be a hell of a hell of a group next year. And that's just again, you put these actions in place and it's gonna one of the results and the more more laid out, the more systematic, the more fine tuned it is, uh, the better it's gonna be. So uh still over Renee to building your team and company. Again, what I love about this office is you know, all of us here. Everybody here is willing to share, help, uh, pick up a phone, and answer questions. Uh, so again, just when you're you know expressing you know the value to your circle of influence, to people you meet, to, to they ask you you know why did you build the wonder, why are you here, why whatever, you know you gotta be you gotta have that kind of elevator pitch, you know ready, you know so yeah, you know, if you don't know why you're here or can explain your realty wonder in about ten seconds or like why we're different, you know I think you work on it because that could be you know, that could be the opening question somebody has is gonna lead into. You know, well, the reason I'm asking is because of my neighbor thing about selling. I want to tell them about it. You know, but if you fumble that first question, you know, they're like, I'm not going to pass your name on to my neighbor because you can even tell them about how you're there what about you. You know, so I'm not going to, you know, put you on and that's a professional, not a good job. So you got to get to be prepared to know who you're working with, why you're working, where you are, what your value is that you offer, what you're good at, what, you know, what you would sell at. Uh, you got to build a team of companies. You know, you got to have our go-to mortgage companies, escrow, uh, home inspection, warranty, home repair, uh, and uh, and other professionals. I get asked all the time, and, and when you're out there, people ask you about selling, you're working houses, all this, this, you know, this, 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 be on person for this, be on person for that. Dion's amazing. Man. Dion has people for everything, and I usually go to her for people, and I'm trying to build because she just has we just got right, you know, you know, a guy specializes in you know, whatever it's up call this. You know, that's just that expertise that she conveys to the clients that they know, wow, this person does must do a lot of transactions, a lot of deals, but they have these go-to people right away. You know, if you don't have it, you know, the question would know You know, I don't have one right now, but I'm gonna ask my office. We have an office of all agents, you know, 70 agents who share are the best of the best. <coughs> you do have professionals, I want to reach out five years. You know, use these conversations to, to keep you know solidifying that you're the best, why you're work, working where you are, kind of revalidating to the people you're talking to. Uh, that they're working with the best person has the best interest and they're, they're, you know, they're not going to be working next door or you know drop if you drop the ball they're not forget you you know if you're not if you don't have that trust to take if they don't think they're the best the best and you drop the ball they're gone so you know having all these people your go to's on your phone that you can be able to share with people uh, right away is very important uh, you know 
you know, you I get asked all the time, you know, do you have a handyman for this, a handyman for that? And you should have that. If you don't have it, build build your go to team to have those really mm -hmm. things. Uh, all right, do you stick over to run your business like a real business? So, again, we're all independent contractors, but we're all business owners. It's up to us to be ourselves, our family. Nobody's going to make us successful besides us in this room. We've got to start acting to run our business like a business. Some, you know, it all starts with business plan uh, and writing out your goals. If you don't have a business plan for your goals written out, what the hell are you going to be for achieving? If your goals don't scare you, they're not big and they scare you, they're not worth, uh, you don't have big enough goals. So we're going to do an exercise on here. Uh, you want to hand out, go ahead, your income goal for, for the year. You want to put your hand up? No. Level, chapter one ties into this, so we'll get to it in a minute. So, start as we're now talking about start thinking about the number you want to make next year income. The most common answer, you know, is the agents are just getting a business for hundred thousand uh, dollars. Double if it's your goal is hundred thousand, it should be two hundred thousand. If your goal is next year, 150,000, it should be 300,000. It doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. So let's start thinking about your goals. We're gonna you know, write these down. Uh, and then we're gonna show you our worksheet to work through them. Anyone that's big enough. If you don't start thinking of, of our daily lives, everything like a business, as a profit and loss and where every penny is gone, how do we know how many deals we need to do to achieve what we want to achieve? We don't. You know, a lot of us in the room don't know how much we're spending uh, a month on gas, how much we're spending on advertising. How much are we spending, you know, on our each list? We, you know, we don't have an idea. We just kind of everything. Everything's different. Now I got another thing. I'll just go this year, this year, this year. At the end of the day, if I ask ninety-nine percent agents, well, okay, you got a six thousand dollar commission check after everything was said and done. After you, know, you get that sold, how much? Left? I have no idea. So you don't run like a business. That's that, this this exercise is going to help us set those goals, so we can reverse engineer what we need to do to make it. The three hundred thousand dollars, but we have two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, of expenses. We're clearing fifty. We got to we got to tighten up some things, change some things. That 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 things aren't you know what we said. So we're going to go through a whole structure and work on that. But again, if you're serious about building a business, you know, and not just you know doing this for extra money or seeing what comes here and I'll be like, oh, what this that. We got to get a business plan. We got to set goals. We got to reverse engineer them. Uh, and there's structure worksheets and things we want to go through to help help do that. So. So the next one. Oh, we no, one minute, sorry. One of the there you go. So we got to have revenue producing and supporting activities. Every activity that you conduct in your business could be characterized as either revenue producing or support. So the revenue producing activities are activities that meet directly to revenue, directly to a paycheck. You know, the support activities are activities that support the revenue producing ones and it'll eventually lead to revenue. Supporting activities are the feel good activities. So the way I think of this is most of us operate on a day-to-day -day basis, just doing nothing but supporting activities and we feel like we want. But if we look back and think about it, like, hey, we didn't produce any revenue. But I got a lot done. I ran all the jobs in the I showed six people 25 houses, they ain't gonna buy it. A lot of them, a lot of them were a waste of time. It was a waste of my time, but I you know I had a busy day. You can't just have a busy day. Did you produce any revenue during that day? You know where the biggest Waste of my supporting activities were, or jumping the buyer said jump. Uh, and not saying this boundary because it wasted my whole damn day. And you look back, you know, you try to, you're exhausted. You, know, you, you put 600 miles on your car and you make no money. You got new, new, no new prospects, you got no listing appointments, you got nothing in profit, but you drove 600 miles and spent, you know, X amount of gas, X amount of eating out, and now you're $500 a day. You know, we, we, don't, we don't think about our days and our weeks like that. But we do, it's a business. Everything's revenue producing or supporting. So we've got to maximize the revenue, revenue producing activities. Uh, so you define, you know, uh, 
Uh, so revenue producing activities are prospecting, going to listing, generating appointments, uh, and showing qualified buyers. Qualified buyers. Buyers that you know are ready to pull the trigger. They aren't looking six months out. If I have buyers, that, like, you know, if I haven't looked at a buyer three to six months, you know, I just want to start getting out there and filling what's, you know, what's on the market. Like, you know what, I'll send you listings, you know, and then, you know, when time is close, I keep checking up on them. You know, I want, I want to actually try to get in front of them closer to that point in time. You'll kind of get to get a little, little more people you deal with. Uh, you know, you'll kind of get an idea, well, let's say three to six, sometimes it, it, it's like two or three months. But again, if it's kind of like, you know what, I'm thinking about buying next year sometime. They want to see 10 houses. What the hell is my concern? I'm not even pre qualified. Part of them are pre approval. They don't got a buyer agency agreement, but, you know, how many times we show buyers at that house? We've all done it. You know, so again, qualified buyers. You know, these are revenue producing activities and we've got to protect our boundaries, our time, our work. The majority of us in this room can accomplish more with a solid 20 hours, maybe even 60 hours, if we just set the time frame, focus, and set boundaries around those 20 hours and maximize those. We're going to get, we're going to talk about how we do that and uh, how we do that and make sure we stick to, stick to the plan. Sporting activities or paperwork, you know, preparing marketing pieces, attending classes. I mean, these, these things are necessary uh, to get the revenue, but they shouldn't be predominantly everything you're making up in your week. And a lot of people add a lot of supporting activities sometimes just to make them feel like we accomplished something. We'll create yeah. lists just to check things off of this to feel accomplished. But they're supporting activities and they're not making any money. You know, so you just got to think about everything, every act, active activity, every, you know, second of day, the revenue producing was support. Am I doing this just to feel busy and feel like I called something because I'm getting the bus so far? And that's the, that's why, you know, reality sets in there. I'm just going to stack busy. Then you got to refocus and get on the revenue producing activities that you know you need to be doing. Uh, so go over to time management. So if you know if anybody's had more probably three conversations with me as through the word time blocking, I'm not about everybody in this room. If you're about time blocking, this transformed my week, my business in, in 2017 when I started time blocking. Uh, you need to sign a calendar system, and we're going to talk about steps of, of how to time block. Uh, so this is an example of a schedule. So this one here is not, not the best. It's okay. But we can go to on, on Google. You can create your own calendar for a week and for whatever hours. You can half hour blocks, hour blocks, 15 minute blocks, whatever. This person has to wake up, they go to the gym, the yellow, the green is prospecting, the yellow is accountability, the gray down here is family and personal, uh, the red is open houses, uh, the blue is admin, uh, the purple is follow up. So again, they just kind of color coordinate their activities. So again, what, what's the revenue producing activities? Lead generation is number one. If we're not spending three hours a day of lead generating, we need to find three hours to time block three hours a day of lead generating. That will double your business next year. Three hours lead generating. And when I say lead generating, when I time block, thank you. Here, here's, here's the challenge. And it's uncomfortable at first, but you got to set those boundaries. If, it's, if your lead generation is from 8 to 11 on Mondays, the people that's most important to you is my wife. The same person is you. should drop everything you're doing for, or your significant other, children, whatever. They should know how to get a hold of you. They should know your calendar. If it's 8 to 11, my wife needs to get a hold of me when I, when I was doing this on a regular basis, she would call three times in a row. I know I'd better call back. Anything else? There's nothing in the world that's going to fall apart that's going to destroy a deal in three hours. If you're, doing, if, you're, if you're doing your business right here, you're, you know, you're kind of going to self organize. You're going to have pissed off buyers. You're going to have people calling you, agents calling at you. And if you're, and you know, when, once you start going this group, you'll get into the group. You'll be rock and roll for an hour, have a great conversation. You know, you're going door knocking, whatever it may be. 
And then all of a sudden, boom. And then a, a buyer is asking stupid questions and getting pissed off, where it may be. Now, for the next two hours, your mindset's shot. You got to go. It, it happened that, again. That, that's our, you know, mentality is trying to jump and answer and be there, you know, for everybody at every given second of time. What's your one producing, you know, revenue producing activity is lead gen. Some kind of agencies here to business, they don't lead gen at all. They're just generating it, you know, from sphere of influence. Uh, they just, they just come across their plates, you know, just they're repetitive, you know, and that's where they to get to that, you know, two, three million dollar flat tail and they're never bust through it. You know, if they want, they want to go to six, they want to go to 10, but they don't do the number one thing that's going to get them there, it's going to lead generation. So that's the first, should be the first block on your calendar is lead generation three hours a day. So, you're like, oh my God, I don't lead just three hours a week. I'm going to do 15 hours a week. <laughs> You want, to, you want to achieve your big why, you want to go to the next level, you want to be a 10 million dollar producer, wherever it may be, you better leave that three hours a day. If you're, if you're not going to do it, you might as well waste the next save your next 10 weeks here and just keep going and keep, keep going because you're staying in your company. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, there's, there's unlimited ways to lead gen. We'll go through it, we'll share it here, you know, what we're going to lead generation ourselves, how we go forward, how we go our company. But this, the perfect week uh, calendar, you will get more done in half the time by setting those boundaries. Like saying, you know, I, I just show houses on Monday in the afternoon. Yeah, that's my, that's my, or I make my paperwork task. You know, whatever it may be, stick to it. It's uncomfortable to sell. And, and again, that like I said before, you erase it, replace it. There's certain kinds of things come up that you have to have to replace. You know, and if, but, if, but if something pops up where my two hours of lead generation is moving here, I'm popping that two hours down there and replacing it somewhere. Do you only show houses on certain days? Right now? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you need Monday to show any houses on Monday to the week. Doors, you don't show on the weekend, do you? Welcome. Not, well, this past week I did from Louisiana. You know, that, that was out of state. But most of the time, I'm getting a man, you know, going to week. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised if people are available in a week. You would think they're available. You just ask them to tell them. Oh, you just send them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Honestly, <laughs> you get seriously. I'm going to call on Wednesday. Hey, can you see how it's Saturday? I'm going to say, no, we'll, you know, what's going on tomorrow evening? Nothing. Okay. Yeah, people just ask people things and you can do it for them. It's ridiculous. Like, you just. To get it. Like, look at my dog Bruno. Like I wanted to get him his haircut before Christmas. I called today. They're like, no, sorry, we have nothing before Christmas. Like they, like people set their schedule and you work around them, right? Yeah. Like you you can't let people yeah, they will ruin your life. Like, okay, yeah, you want to see him? Like, we'll go tomorrow. Same with like, calls. I don't take calls right anymore either. I don't. I respond very well. And people understand, like I was terrified about it. It was like a huge, I, I was so scared to do it, but like I had to for my personal life and no one cares. And every time if I respond in the morning, they're like, oh nice. yeah, no, I didn't expect you to respond. I'm like, well, what the hell were you texting me at 45? Like they just, they're like, oh, it just came in my head. So I, I thought I'd text you. Like they don't, they're and, and I, for some, some reason, like this, it like say like 8.30 and I'm, you know, if I'm alone or whatever, yeah, they respond. Different. No, like what they said, like if I wanted to respond. Yeah, yeah, they well, don't. They don't. But well, we have this perception like, holy shit, I better jump. You know? Yeah, why? Yeah. Wow. But yeah, you can't confuse that with being a comic. No, exactly right. You're right. Exactly. I was no, you, you can't have that. That's what the balance of getting out of your comfort zone, starting to set boundaries around your time, and then realizing the game that my business isn't being affected, I'm actually achieving more. And then, then getting on the mindset, but yeah, I mean, you, like I said, sometimes you have to erase it to like, replace it. You know, you know, there's gonna be certain times yeah. where, like, say, when it was, when it was yeah. the, you know, these houses were getting ten offers, and multiple, you know, your buyer wanted to see it, but like that's your lead ten times. You don't get them in there. You, know, you, know, you need to, you need to jump. In, you and know? the other mm -hmm. thing too is like sometimes people respect you more when you like say no, I'm busy or I'm booked. Like they're like, oh, she's not just chasing me and chasing business because I was chasing business, you know, and I would drop everything for them, and then it's like. Either you're not producing a lot, and that's why you're always available, or you have no personal life, and you don't. Like that's why you're doing this. 
free moment he said. And, and you know, uh, it, you know this, this, you know, your big why or your goals, you know, and everything. I, I say financial a lot, but you know, it should be that you, know, you can have, you can be a, a millionaire more times over, and everything else lays falling apart because your priorities are, you know, you look at that balance. This is a balance, and that, that's like Renee. You know, it, it was a balancing because she's so ambitious and she was hell's age to put her personal things up. And the same thing with me. My wife said, like, you know, like this, you know, come home, get the locker phone with you. It's not these kids. I have four kids. And then they're like, I'm, I'm like, I was missing, you know, things and, and, and realizing because I'm jumping for people that, you know, aren't jumping for me. But again, I'm, I'm not being unaccommodating, you know, but I got to set those boundaries and, 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 and get that. I'm going to achieve this. I'm like, this is my hours. I'm going to achieve it in. And this is my family time. So, do you ever, if you only, like Renee, you said you show Monday nights and Thursday nights, well, what if you have a buyer reach out to you Friday, say, I want to see this house, and you're like, well, I'll show you Monday, and then it sells over the weekend. Well, so that, that, that's yes. knowing your market. Yeah. That's okay. knowing the market. And yeah. I have, if it's a brand new client, like, I'll refer it out and yeah. just take a referral if I know, hey, this is probably <laughs> I know that's sell. one of the things that makes yeah. me so nervous. I, I mean, even... Yeah. Even if it's not a hot market, I still get nervous. That, like just, just in case, my luck, it'll yeah. sell over the weekend. Yeah. And, and normally, I'll text the agent and be like, like "Listen, it only I can only show this house on Monday. Can you please let me know if you have any So, like, I if I talk to that agent, because I always text the agent that day. That's yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah. Think it's like the, on Monday they'll get someone that says they want to see a house Friday, and then like Thursday night the client okay. texts you like, "Hey, it's contingent. Are we still seeing it tomorrow?" So, yeah, like, okay. I'll talk to the agent, get a feel. And if there is like a bunch of showings or no okay. house or whatever, I'll get, I'll, I, okay, I, I get help. I mean, yeah, I do, I don't, I'm not saying I show not, none of my clients true. see houses. I, I yeah. need help. But, but getting a feel from the agent. Though, yeah, so it's hard, hard, but at the end, like I have a life now, right. you know, and yeah. I didn't, so. Yeah. Okay. And then it was, it was me out of the covers Yeah. Yeah. I was terrified. I came in here. I was like crying when I met them. I was like, I can't work nights and I can't work weekends. I'm probably going to produce zero dollars. Yeah. Like it, I was <laughs> terrified. I cried. It, I hated it, you know, but it was like that or my relationship. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, like, I wasn't going to be a miserable, you know, single person forever just because <laughs> I couldn't yeah. like, handle both. Yeah. You know? and, and it just comes down to leveraging our time. You know, you, you gotta be you gotta leverage your time, you gotta do the rest of the producing activities, and double down on those, and put the boundaries up, and protect yourself. Like, this one guarantee, we will all achieve more than half the time if we just protect our, our balance. Do it. Like, I, I, I coach by Tanner, I have on um, Kelly Williams. He was coming fifty nine dollars a month. The whole first month, all we did was count time blocking. Every single time was time blocking until we got a calendar that worked for me and we modified it. We didn't do a damn thing else, fifty hundred bucks. But you know what? Definitely a month. I got I got the time block back. You know, every every week the phone call, every you know, sending in my calendar. That's all we did. Yeah, I can't say fifty nine bucks a month on the calendar, <laughs> but it changed everything. You do how the important was. I can't emphasize this enough. I've told everybody in this room probably numerous times. Time block, time block, time block. So now what we're gonna do is I want to see a calendar next week, but preliminary calendar time blocks and perfectly scheduled, and see. You know, it's, it's gonna take modification. I mean, you're gonna get it right first. I took you know, like. Even after the first month, I still was making some slight changes. Well, you know, this I'm not just really in luck. And that came up people on lead generating here. So I'm going to move it here. I'm going to move my workout here. You know, but they're like my, my they're, you had your cert, certain ones that were, were locked in there. Like my wake up time, my workout, my Bible study, that was locked in there. That, that, that's what I did. Then, you know, I cut. Like in my family time, boom, that was locked in there. Then move things around so it works for you. Who you deal with, what your clientele schedules are. Like I said, it's not, it's not never breaking. Like, you know, those weekends where, you know, my wife and kids are away. I'm not gonna sit down by myself right. and say, I'm not your house on the weekend, you know. Exactly. So, you know, now I'm showing up now, now I'm bumping things up and getting a lot done, a lot of things on the day, lots of things on the weekends, you know. So, but again, it's it's we're doing supporting activities, we're running all over, we're, we're, we're chasing this, chasing that, we're doing this. Uh, you know, and this is an opportunity about leveraging our time. If we're, you know, to get that next level, if we're, you know, at that four to six million dollar range, in order to get to that ceiling, we gotta start. Passing up the supporting activities off. The first thing is transaction coordinator. We have one in the office. Uh, and again, I'm going to use Lucia because she was the five horse card. Lucia is a transaction coordinator. She felt like, well, I didn't get anything out of it. I still didn't say my work. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't set up how, how you know, to proper communication from the beginning and, and, and letting it go and, and setting the boundaries. So, 
was, was somebody who was seeing new, so they could reach out to her directly instead of instead of you know kind of communicating how the process is going to flow out to get the contract signed. You know, so maybe I want to see her pull it up and I'll, I'll send you the contract. I'll, I'll do this because I'm already I'm not doing anything else. You know, so basically you can pay for nothing. When you get a contract on a, a deal on a contract, you pass the contract on the, con uh, the transaction coordinator. You let the listing agent know from now on going out, you're going to be dealing with Cindy. Remember your transaction coordinator to be assistant. You know, so she's going to handle everything from here on out. You let the title company know who to communicate with. Here's the listing agent. Here's my transaction coordinator. You let the lender know. All communication is with the transaction coordinator. You step away. If anything, you do inspections. Reply to inspection, that's it. And then, then, then once it's done, you try to, then, then. I've had deals last year that I forgot where even, I didn't even remember the property. There were a 60 day close. The student's like, hey, we're going to get this scheduled. I'm like, what the hell property is this? I don't remember. Sure. <laughs> that's the way it should work. How you about know, communicating with the client in between? You know, you know, you, that, that's set, you know, when you meet the client, like the process, relationship building, you know, talk about how you work with the team. Sorry. You know, so that's not, we have, you know, you know, I'm going to be showing the house and thinking of the negotiation, the best deal. You know, once you get in our contract, you know, we have a whole team of professionals, the, the closing, you know, the lender, the transaction coordinator, to make this as smooth process as possible, make sure we close on that. You, you, just, you just explain to them why and how it's going to happen. And this is not, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, I'm fully involved. They don't, they don't know what we do when we don't have it. They have no idea what we do. They think we just get a bunch of they think we just show up and close it. So it's not like they think we're doing less work. They have no idea what we do anything. So we just explain to them, you know, I'm still fully involved. I talk to the transaction coordinator daily. Everything, you know, communicate with, everything I need to communicate with you. It, it, and then that, that Move Easy app that people are starting using here, you set that up on a communication, you know, campaign where you communicate to Move Easy. It makes it automated. You know, now they're getting touched, they're, they're getting notified of things, they're feeling engaged still, uh, and it's all systematized. And now, instead of the six or seven hours of paperwork you do on a transaction, that is, now you have six hour lead gen that you're going to generate more business from. Does she um, take things, um, put things into Skyslope? No, she didn't. I think, I don't know if our program on Skyslope is I don't know if it's if she will. I, we, we need to sit down and I need to actually iron out exactly how trans how I get Dr. Zelly to her to uh, I don't know if Kristen you know scan my notes through I don't know how to process I don't know how to I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but but you know but, you know and there, there, there's all, all the car things we can have too on the listing side and, and, and then take that time, you know, if it takes you you know an hour to put a listing up there, but we can spend, you know, twenty bucks to pass it on and not get the listing up. Now, you know, now you have an hour of showing houses, an hour of, you know, learning the MLS, learning your market, or an hour of Facebook marketing, whatever it may be. Pass off those no, those those low income producing, low revenue, or low supporting uh, activities. Pass them off. So 300 bucks per deal, I paid my transaction for in 2017, $36,000 per deal. I could, if I had $300 per deal, I'd pay $12,000. I'm going to save 20 grand. But again, I was able to go out and generate more business because I didn't deal with anything. That, that, that is, if you're four or five million, you're never going to get seven, eight, nine, ten without your That's that. And then in here, but this is written, this is your first hire should be an admin, admin to do your transaction donation. Now we have the house. So, uh, so that's the first thing is we can jump on a computer and email you kind of like templates you can actually play with them on, 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 on Google. So, another action plan right now is next week, we're going to have a calendar written out of our perfect week. When we're going to lead gen, we put three hours a day of lead genning in there. That's first and foremost, uh, revenue producing. When you're going to show show clients, when you ideally like to show clients, when you like to get your life back, because you know, my weekends suck because I can't go out with my friends, go show houses, then protect your weekend and put those activities elsewhere. So we're going to, you know, again, with our accountability partners, and then next week, you know, we're going to go with kind of our, our, our calendar details. So that's, that's the launch. Uh, it's 11 o'clock now, guys. Is everybody, you guys want to jump into the week one log, mirrors a lot of this. We can go through week one quickly. We got the material. You want to save it for next week? Or you guys want to get out of here? I got to take off personally. Everybody, uh, we'll, 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 we'll sit together for the week or whatever. So we'll go through, like, a lot of it just, just built on, on this uh, for, for week one. Uh, so, does anybody time block now or have a calendar? Besides me? Because I was by a and I always like, just 
Number of times, you know, this is not just real estate. This, this is your workout, your family time. Your, this, this is trying to balance our work, professional, you know, life on paper so you create the perfect loop. You work with, you have a spending dollar, you work with your spending dollar. This shouldn't be just, you know, by yourself. And so your, your counter might tell you that, you know, mess with my wife. She's like, why are you going to do this, this, and this? Okay, watch me right here. You know, this, this should be, if you know, if you're married, you know, partner, whatever. Work with this. When do you want to have family time? When do you want to plan? You know, this, the communication is there at home on what you're doing, when you're doing it. Uh, that's when you're going to get be disrupted, or you know, you can be, you know, they can get mad at you because you're not available here, or you know. But if you have it set, then you kind of know moving forward where you're going to be, kind of any given time. It, 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 it really negates all that. Like you know, before, my weekends were, were jam packed with showing houses. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, why why aren't you taking the baseball? Why aren't you doing nothing? I just Hell, hell yeah. You know, this is, this is ridiculous. You know, you know, but it gets away from them. And then you get, you get focused on your goals and your business. It's easy for other things to take the back seat and the family and, and, and you know, they take, take away a little bit of time here. And I'm always at this hour. That hour turns into two hours. That hour turns into Saturday morning. Okay. And that's even busier. I'm Saturday. I'm on Sunday. But then something pops up on Sunday and I jump here and you know, now I'm at church. Or, you know, it's it, it, it happens. Uh, it happens because we don't protect it and we don't have a plan. Again, if we don't have a plan, every week's a roller coaster. Every week's different. You know, every week is like you know, we've had our great weeks where we got so much accomplished, we made money, we we we're not stressed. You know, everything went smooth, and then we'll be able to reproduce that week next week. We just think back like, well, how did that week so good? Mm -hmm. You know, just you know, put it together. But it, it took me a month. This is not going to happen. You're not going to do one counter. This is it. We're sticking to it. I mean, that, that's you're going to fail. This is not going to work out. And the whole month, every single week, I was working on the calendar. And you'll get so ingrained in that calendar, you won't need to look at it. You know where where you should be. You know time block. You'll know where. You know. And, and like I said, you should. You know, if it's lead gen, nothing in the world is interrupting that lead gen. If it's family time, nothing in the world. No buyer is going to take me away from my three hours. Of, that gets me you know, six to eight o'clock. I'm, I'm, you know, going home work and watch TV. They're not being buyer getting that phone call over my kids' home. You know, so you, you got to protect it, but we don't because again, our mentality is we got to be, you know, all and everything and every given second for everybody to break every time. So, uh, let's take a two minute break while I get the uh, restroom drink while I get the uh, chapter one up here. We'll go through it quickly. Uh, uh, she gets so far, her, her action plan is hard. By the books, she's a nurse, so she is all like MREA, miracle morning, and the one thing. Number two is fill out. The circle of influence sheets with all the people's names, contacts, you know, start building their database. And number three is uh, start working on a preliminary calendar time blocking for, for next week. I think so. Yeah. No, what was number one? Five books. Oh. Start reading. Yeah. What? No, yeah. It does give me like this. I'm not talking about that. I'm just like, like, I wake up early. I get everything. I'll play the thing. From like five to eight a.m. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This question is a good question. Yeah, yeah. 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 See right now, guys, I got I got a closing company to ask me for closing for commission statements and closing on that. Like 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 this, like this stuff comes in all the time. Well, DJ, how many times like no, you know, your 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 lender reaches out to you and asks for a document? Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm gonna hang the phone, I'm gonna send a document out here. 
And now you're out of your mindset. I try to get back on lead gen or whatever. The conversation sucks. So, yeah, that's an email. Get the help. Turn your emails off while you're trying to talk. I mean, I got half of the things that people are asking for stuff. You're not like, no, you know, just, you know. That's what I said, 5 8 It's going to be there. Yeah. But that's what I do, though, because I have to get all that stuff done. I like here. Yeah, see, I don't do it at night. Right, for you. Yeah, it's rude. Hey, Jennifer, it's James here. Like I said, guys, the buyer is just going to be able to get shown something like that. The buyer is going to be able to get shown something like that. They're trying to change that and not be on their phones all the time. They can't even time. Exactly. It's weird. And it's fine. I will get that to you today. Okay, sure. Uh, last he too. spring, she was like, I just want to go and come home. And we walked in the house after that. And she up to her, do you want to do that? And I was like, You're right, it's so weird. Why do I do that? <laughs> my parents switched me from being an executive for a to my sister. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm too busy. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, guys, you have any questions or comments? Or you want to share anything? Yeah, you can. It's just like you know, it's just like <laughs> 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 that's that's a All right, guys, coming out this one is one of the uh, an animation that. Uh, Kind of share it from bold with Heather Williams next to it. And again, I'm not like a raw, raw type coach nearly, but actually in, in bold, I, I skipped on this session. So they actually had people lay on the ground and we sprinkled, they sprinkled money on people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. But so for yeah. this affirmation, money flows to be freely and easily from unexpected and unexpected, from expected and unexpected sources. Just imagine waking up in the morning, saying that 10 times, and then you just, you know, start out the universe, you know, and, you know, and, and See what happens. You know, get that mindset. I'm not, you know, money's going to flow to you freely. Just get that mindset. We're going to go out there. You're going to create revenue. You're going to meet people that's going to mm -hmm. bring value to your life. It's going to take your business to the next level. It's going to get you in our transaction. This is just, this, this, this just a positive affirmation that uh, a lot of agents use, a lot of coaches, you know, you know talk to. It, it is kind of like a, a well building affirmation. Uh, so guys, we gotta you know work on creating our goals, creating a bunch of expensive worksheets, talk about our current productivity, time blocking, personal accountability. A lot of things we talked about here uh, already, just kind of dive into a little bit more, more detail. So with writing our goals, if we don't know where we are now, we can't set goals and figure a game plan how to get there. So the first step starts with assessing where we are now. If we were lost in the middle of a jungle right now. You know, with nothing but a compass and a map, the first thing we'd ask ourselves, okay, where the hell am I? So we got to ask ourselves right now, where the hell are we in our business? Where are we going? And how are we going to get there? So, writing our goals, you should look back on if you've been in business a month or past, the back, past month, past year, two years, three years, wherever it may be, and see, okay, here's where I am. Here's how I got here. Here's what was, you know, didn't work. Here's what I learned from this experience. So, we can set goals moving forward with the team. Uh, So smart goals, you know, this is when we're thinking about what our goals are. Like I said, if they don't scare you, if they don't, uh, one, more, one more time. Oh, no. Smart goals are specific, measurable, attainable, risky, and timely. My favorite one is risky, like I said. If they don't scare you, they're not big enough. Now, what's your goal for next year? Fuck it, you you have a number of money. We all, oh, every eight has a number of money. Five million. Five million? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. There's no reason you can't go 10 million. Buckle down, time block. Your personality, your split of influence, meet people. I've seen you have one. Now we've got to reverse engineer, work at work plan, set the goals, get the roadmap, see how we're going to get 10. You. 
walk into a room, people, people take notice. Just have a conversation with six people a day. Hang out six business cards, six conversations. That, 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 that'll be two million dollars worth of business. Well, we work with Lucia, you know, her goal was 10 million. Right? So we reverse engineered how she get the five this year, where it all come from, and it, 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 it's a simple roadmap. Here's what you can double down on, here's what you gotta add, here's you know, here's one this, you know, this is very conservative. There's no reason that you see a positive one over it's gonna hit 10 bucks. But we deal with every single one of you. That's why again, me and Dion are transitioning out of you know the buying side and have Chad making my lead generation calls for me, my buying agent, so I can sit down with with every single one of you and spend an hour or two hours setting your goals, reverse engineering, what works well, where are you uncomfortable? Let's get you out of comfort zone, let's drag your button to the computer room and, and do a video, you know. That's what we enjoy. That's what we want to help you guys with. So specific goals again, they have to be specific time frame wise, dollar amount wise, and not just general. You know, I want to, you know, 10, 10 is just too general. You know, I, I want to do I want to do 10 million productivity. I want to do the general do 65% less than 35% higher. And I want to achieve that by November 1st of next year. You know, and I want to, you know, I want to do that. That's the goal. That's like I want to do, I want to do more business. You know, I want to double this. That's not specific. We, 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 can't, we can't measure. We don't know if we're on track or not. not specific. I mean, that's the same thing, you know. Uh, measure bulk is if you're not hitting it, you know. Uh, time, we've got some time. Risky, you guys hear us. All right, let's go to the next screen. This is what I was talking about before. Is our personal expenses and our initial income goal? So that down here, so if, if our income goal is a hundred thousand dollars, but we have no idea ultimately where everything is going, where our expenses are, taxes, you know, uh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta run like business. We, we just, you know, I had a good month and yeah, three closings. You know, good month. You know, how much actual net profit was, was a good month? And most agents can't tell you, like I said, what they netted after taxes, after expenses, after, you know, all the running around on listing. Most of mine, I can't either right now. But I tell you, my coaches that I coach with who do, you know, 300 transactions a year or run their business like a business, they know everything out there can't be what they spend on every listing. I spent an average of $317.43 on this. And it's down to a cent. And that's why they're very successful with their because they have goals. They know how to track it. It's all about tracking. So, most again, that should be our time blocking is you know, our, 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 our business expenses, our, our finances, our, you know, getting our things in order, looking back on you know, where the money's going and not setting those down. Uh, so, we can achieve more income. We got we to gotta have, we got to have a, you know, Sheet that it's in our handouts with the more smooth numbers. Like I said, most of our goals aren't big enough to achieve more. I want this house, I want this car. Well, until we actually know exactly how many transactions it's going to take, my average sale price to get that money to be able to get that house and car, we don't, we can't do a subscribe to it. Uh, again, this is we're not going to do this activity here. This is something we found that your income goal through this uh, expense sheet. Figure that out. Uh, next sheet. Uh, put one back one. So again, this is your mortgage, like 50, all your bills, everything is. This got to be wrapped up in there so we know exactly what our net is. Uh, not wait till tax season to kind of get surprised. You know, how many agents are in tax season? We don't know what we're going to pay taxes when it comes to tax season. Like, holy oh, shit, you know, now we're scrambling, you know, dipping into our savings, pay our taxes, and we get like 20 percent or whatever it may be for our income tax. You know, I hear it every single time, no agents who you know, get in trouble, they blow all their commission, they have nothing to pay, you know. <laughs> Here. We don't plan. Uh, so, go over to an example. So, again, you know, how we do it is simple. We do an average sale price, your average sale price, you know, what your average commission is. You know, take that, you know, times, uh, you know, what you want to earn and divide it. So, this person wanted to achieve $300,000, wherever the hell they live, I want to move there because they're averaging 500000 for sale. So, they need to do 24 transactions, hit their goal. Most of them don't even know, you know. So, you know, how many transactions are going to take you to come? You know? So, we, we got to know that so we know if we're on track. But they come February, it's going to take 55 transactions. 
like this where we have zero, we better get asking here because you know we have a lot of people coming. But we gotta know these figures, know these numbers inside and out of our business plan, uh moving forward to operate like a business and take it to the next level. Because if not, we're just we're just you know, like most agents are just throwing things out there. Well, I'm gonna try this today, I'm gonna try this tomorrow, I'm gonna do this, and you know, there's some highly successful agents out there that operate like that. I, I know 20 million dollars producers that just literally work from four o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the morning and pass out. And they have no idea that they're just the most disorganized mess you've ever seen, but they're making a million dollars, but they have no life. You know, they they you know they have nothing to show for besides two thousand and treatment. Give me, you know, time block, get systems, leverage your time, do it properly, uh, put the right people in place, and then you can you can you're gonna have a hell of more weight and make half the money with all the free time and doing everything you want to achieve more. Again, yeah, know where your money's going, know where your expenses are. Being able to cut back, say, you know, if you're spending, people love, people love to go to our friends. Oh, I'm the one, you know, Zillow. I'm not going to spend $12,000 here on Zillow. How much do you think on Zillow? Yeah, they, they, they have no idea what the return on investment is. You know, I know Zillow works for me, so I double down on Zillow, you know, because I know I'm getting about a six or seven time return on my investment on Zillow on average. You know, so that that's where I put my, my, my weekend on. Now, if you don't know that return on investment of everything you're doing, then you keep doing it and you keep doing it over and over, and this isn't big money. So it's it, 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 it's it's eye opening when I start actually personal conversation with agents of you know, well, okay, what are you doing? How are you spending on this? Well, how many deals did you get? Like, you know, we, we're we're supposed to be terrible at tracking and, and keeping you know, you know, an idea of what we're all doing, where everything's going, and what's going on. It's just because there's so many moving parts with everything in the transaction. You know, from the closing the title to this document, that document, that you know, we put this on a back burner and we don't think about this. This isn't, you know, we know this in the back of our hand, we can't achieve those goals with stuff. So, uh, just kind of going through the thing here, uh, kind of quickly. So, it's kind of a lot of piggybacks off there. Uh, you know, we got to gotta have the plan and we got we to track it. Uh, and tracking it should, should be exciting. You know, if, if we have this down, then we're reverse engineering our numbers to see what we need and how many close transactions we can do. You know, if we're headed now here's a, here's here's the here's what we saw kind of kind of over here. So really more commissions. We saw agents that can do less transactions and make more money and happy places where they are because they're making ten thousand more dollars doing less deals and they're happy. But then 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 they start panicking when things slow down. Oh I don't have anything to fight on. So you got comfortable. You got you're making more money doing less work. You got comfortable get back off of what we're doing you know, because you're giving all away, you know, you're getting fifty percent out. Hang on, you back off what you want. Why don't you double down and make three times? You know, so that that's the you know, again, part of tracking. If you don't know are we slacking, if we're not tracking, you know, we get ahead of the game, we are that it should be a motivation to double down and like blow past our, our, our scary goal. You know, so tracking is actually fun if we know our numbers and we set our goals that are you know measurable once we see the rewarding, it keeps building off that, you know. Positive reinforcement. You know, this is my goal. You know, last year in January, February, I had three closings. I'm shooting for 60. Come January, you got four or five closings on the right. You're excited for that. Like, I'm, I'm off February. I'm going to get five more, but I'm not 10. Now that I want six, I got 10 now. You set the tone for the whole year to be able to measure, measure our goal. Uh, so, go to the current productivity here. So, what does your week consist of? You know, are you efficient, organized, high productive, scattered, disorganized, wasting time? Uh, same thing about <laughs> revenue producing, supporting activities. Uh, so let's keep going. This, this goes a little more in, in time blocking. Uh, and I like to sit down with you individually and work on time blocking instead of kind of going because everybody's different. Like, learn more to do it effectively. Like, for my coach, like, you know, you make it kind of personal. Like, you know, you know, learn, you know, learn about your life. You know, what, what, where we drop the ball, well, you know, you know, Renee was very open when she came to us, and, and we knew, you know, if we if she wasn't open, she up here and she joined us, and we didn't realize where why she came and what she needed to focus on, and things start falling apart even more, and then now we're thinking, well, it's the office, she's gonna blame the office, she's gonna blame us for not to meet her needs because I think so and all I have the real girl they want group, and we like to, you know, we like to put the, the blame on other other things. Like I I my business, my relationship with the shipper that's doing that, I should never let, you know, we, we, we like to place it, you know, elsewhere instead of really diving down. So it's like this time blocking, you know, a lot of times it gets, it gets, it gets, it gets kind of personal. It's like, you know, it's like, listen, you know, my, my boyfriend is pissed or my, my wife's screaming at me because it's not, 
and this is this and this and this is that. Uh, but you know, so I like to sit down personally and work my Bible and really work on some of those issues. So it's not that boring, but it's kind of everything we do to kind of get this get this down. All right, personal accountability. Okay, so this is the biggest thing I said in here is this just committing to this on Tuesdays. We talked about personal accountability on our uh, basically poster board we're going to have. So this is what we're going to be accountable for uh, every week. We come in here before we get started. It's all about lead day. The number of contact you made. Contact is having a real safe conversation with an individual. They can be calling our phone, they can be circle prospecting, they can be door knocking, they can whatever it may be, it's a number of real estate conversations we have. Number two, appointments set. How many appointments did we set since today until next Tuesday morning by lead generation? It's listings taken. You know, we have, like some people might just want to be buying agents, that's fine. You know, it, 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 it's new buyers met. Again, the best bang for your buck in time is focusing on listings, learning how to do listings. That's Dion's expertise, is listing presentation. We'll sit with you, we'll work with you. I'll go over, if it's an expired, if it's for sale matter, I'll go over my exact listing presentation. Word for word. I, knock on wood, I've never lost an expired listing presentation. I didn't know how because I got I got to show them value from the previous agent, the second the second time they failed. I got I got to go in and talk about what's something different. Why are we going to do this this time? And you know the first time that that one of this presentation, this the next thing came from Century Twenty One. Century Twenty One, you you are not allowed to form Jim Delaney's areas. If you send a postcard to Jim Delaney's there, they're asking you to out. So Jessica said, I'm going to start focusing on spot. She called. They're actually talking on the phone. And I said, well, how much time do you have? So let's go over now, because she has, there's actually a phone kind of that So I went, I spent 45 minutes on my phone, but my exact conversation with, you know, what I say to the, the seller, she said, I can't wait to tell them this. Why? I want you to get the listing, you know? And then it was funny because two days later, I, I posted this, I got inspired on this, and she called me, like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, I said a postcard, I, I didn't know it was your listing. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, Power Hill. She goes, I, 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 I sent them mailings and stuff about, about the expired. I didn't know it was yours. Like, how the hell would you know I had a listing? I had a pickle. It's not me. So how the hell would you know that? I said, don't ever apologize to prospecting and lead generating. Send every damn expired. Door knock every damn thing. But, you know, don't ever apologize. But they come from that environment. If you send a postcard to somebody, Jim Delance is talking to you, you're going to know that. So that's the mindset that I get out. There's more than dang business out there you have to do with. Go get it. And if, you, if you're not getting better, then she's going to get it, you're going to get it both of you, but if you're not getting better, that's going to make you better raise the beam and better get off. So again, everybody getting better, and better. everybody's business is going to get better, we're going to be more productive, we're going to take it to the next level. It's just we, we think, oh, there's only X amount of business out there. You got the wrong mindset, and you're not going to get that business. You're going to be struggling to find more business. So uh, that's, you know, with the accountability. Contacts made, appointments set. Listings taken, list, listing, listings taken, and closings. Closing is just you know we have we have the book already just kind of you know keep track so we can set our goals up for next year. Because again, most of us aren't you know keeping track of our closings you know, for a month how many we have. So, can you say this for again? Just one more time. Uh, contacts made. That's a real estate conversation. As lead gen prospecting, you know, asking somebody to buy or sell. Appointment set as a buying consultation, being a new buyer, or a listing presentation. Mm -hmm. Listings taken as actually going on a listing presentation, securing a listing, and closing. Now, this, this this is how when we took bold, we do how many average transactions people increase by by weekly accountability. Now, we, we, have, we have a thing in bold called uh, easy bold. Uh, did you give me, how, who was it, the bold, what was the challenge, how many calls in a week? You said that was only 100? It seems to me, once you start lead gening, and it seems like, looking back now, like, bold 100, that's, that's not like enough to do a bold 100 in two hours right now. You know, but, but we're not lead generating now. Calling and contacting and talking to 100 people, holy shit, people like get freaked out. We actually, 
to celebrate that, you know, in here. If anybody makes a hundred conversations, real estate conversations, contacts, you know, we want to know. Because out of those hundred conversations, I guarantee you're gonna have some appointments out of there. And again, it's a real estate conversation. Uh, and it, it's cool if you if you do the challenge, coming here and, and, and sharing with the class how you obtain those hundred conversations with hundred contacts. You know, it's cool. Well, people went people went to Walmart. That one fact they got like the three appointments went to Walmart, like 1130 at night, and there's no Walmart, but just you know, a lot of a lot of like I don't go to Walmart at all, but apparently like people who like Walmart avoid you know the typical Walmart crowd, they'll go like late night. It's like it's like they're like escape, but there's like you know, like higher income people, Walmart 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, these late people. <laughs> so they went to Walmart all week long from like 9 30, 10 o'clock to midnight. And everybody in Walmart had a real estate conversation. And that, I forget how many appointments they set, but it was, a, a, it was almost a half a dozen I wanted to see. <laughs> just having conversations in Walmart and Belmont. So, I mean, that's kind of the out of box thinking of like, where are going to have these conversations? Where can I meet? You're a cashier. If there's a half a dozen people in Walmart, you walk them, you know, and say, it's, 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 it's not creepy. It, it, it's people like to talk about real estate. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't know why, but it's an easy conversation to have. It's not like you're up there and saying, you know, you just ask them like some random crazy, you know, hey, where'd you get those pants at? Like, you know, it's just, <laughs> it, we're just, you know, we're just, you know, offering, you know, meet people and offering our services. Uh, so, where it may be, shoot for 100 conversations over the next week is, is, is the goal. You guys, honestly, when you get into this, this becomes second nature. You're lead generating three hours a day. You'll make, you will knock 100 conversations out in, in three days. Then you'll see, like, shit, I did 100 conversations. I got three appointments. I'm going to do 200 conversations. I got six appointments this week. Could you imagine going on six appointments in one week? What that would, you know, just, that is, that's, that, that's easily handled when we have these, you know, mindset and conversations. We do things we need to do to let people know that we want to see. So, any questions on what we're going to be accountable for and what we're going to report that we did? So, everything we're going to start beginning here is again, we're going to go through our names, our numbers. Uh, so, everyone in the room, we're going to write them on, on the board. There'll be a prize for the person with the most appointments and everything uh, at the end of the session. And uh, so, uh, there's a, uh, a week, month, year kind of like goal setting tool here. I'm not crazy about this kind of this setup, but there's no the point is find some kind of system, some kind of calendar, some kind of you know planner that you can set your weekly goals, your monthly goals, and yearly goals. We we need to track this weekly. We need to know how many conversations we need to have weekly. We need to have these metrics moving forward so we can reverse engineer our goals. Until we start doing these things and have numbers that we know, we might in the reverse part, it might take two hundred conversations to get much better. You know, so now we need to, we need to do three hundred to get you know. One and a half books. So whatever we need to know these metrics to be able to work with you to double down and then work with you what you're doing. If you're ever doing our conversations, you know, we then if we're not really gonna want to put we need to dive in, okay, what kind of conversation do you have? Should we you know there's gonna be more and more appointments. So you know this allows us to be able to work with you throughout the whole year to achieve these goals. So this is one of the handouts, it's a way to achieve, you know, uh, weekly, monthly, yearly goals to be able to track them. It's all comes down to tracking. If you can't track, we got nothing. Uh, so prospecting. Let's go around the room, guys, and kind of go. Where do leads come from? So you can use your circle of opportunities model to define your lead sources uh, and do the joint based prospecting activities first. Again, you know, most of our business come from things we like or conversations or people or, or, or sources that we are having success with. So we need to go double down on those, but we need to get out of company zone. So, you know, just, even just even. A business card to somebody freaks people out. I mean, that, that, that is just totally not some people's you know, uh, comfort zone. We need, to, we need to get them out of comfort zone. And we do it bit by door. So uh, let's go around the room because, again, there's like walking through Walmart in the middle of the night with, I never popped my head as it was a good lead source. You know, so, you know, kind of think outside the box, share what you're kind of doing for lead turn right now. And I, if something popped, maybe you know, I want to, you don't kind of have an like, activity wish we do, you know, or know we need to be doing. You know, so it's just going to share with kind of like, you know, what we're doing now, what we know we need to be doing, and kind of like, I can't just pop in the head, but, uh, you know, something I might be comfortable with, I'm not comfortable with, make an impact. Now, what are you, what are you going through your lead right now? 
I mean, a lot of it's just people that I know and don't even necessarily know on a personal level, but at least know who I am. Um, and just trying to at least continually be in front of them to just, you know, hopefully keep in mind that, hey, this is what I do. And if there's anything that I could, uh, you know, offer you in terms of services, even if it's not for you directly. Um, Does it like LinkedIn and social media stuff? No, it's it's more or less through like the like the basketball stuff that I do. Okay. And guys that are in the local. So it's just still like personal, like you know. It is. Even though it's not people that again I know personally, but they at least they say, "Oh, I know him." Oh, okay, he's. And then, and then hopefully it generates some sort of. So that, that's that's more like your your kind of like your second right. circle. You know, the people mm -hmm. that know you, you have done business with, it's kind of like a warmer conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now we just we just have a older conversation. And you know, if you know, there's a lot of opportunities in networking groups or like social groups or meetup groups out there. You know, if you, if you enjoy, you know, baking, join two or three different baking groups. You know, it, it's your hobby, but also that's two or three kind of people that you're in front of that are going to maybe potentially use, use you as, as an agent, have conversations with. What do you know you need to be doing do more of? Um, I think generating and, and getting out in front of people that have no idea who I am. Uh, and, giving them an opportunity just to speak with and meet and, and understand what we do and maybe just educate them and then maybe the personality type of thing leads to business that they can refer to because it's you know you always think well hey if they don't need something from me now it doesn't mean that their neighbor their friend you know family member might not as well you touched on a great point education opportunities there are more organizational groups that are just dying for public speakers. They go out there and do a first time home buyer seminar. Like, I built my chiropractic practice basically on workshops. I had a Words of Osteoporosis program center at three locations. I did nothing on it but, but Peter's Township Osteoporosis workshops. I had 15, 20 women come in, you know, with bone density issues, learning about how to you know, naturally take care of it, introduce my program. Out of the 15 that came, some of them would buy supplements, some of them, two or three would join the program. But, you know, they talked, you know, I was known as the you know, osteoporosis, you know, natural prevention you know, guy. You know, had a great program. That was all two workshops. It didn't cost me anything. Besides an ad, you know, I did in paper that was the observer reporter. Now it's like, now it's social media. You know, or like go to the organization, how to promote you through their channel. When's the last time you saw an agent do an educational program? You might see maybe two or three agents that do one periodically. Can you imagine getting on a calendar of a library mm -hmm. on first time home buyers and you being a go to? Like, like you may not know who you do because like, oh, the one's always in that, that, you know, ball in the library or whatever they do. Tweak monthly. It is, that, that, that it becomes ingrained. They expect me to be there. He's not there. People are saying, but he's not going to be the seminar. You know, mm -hmm. so it's like these educational opportunities way, way under the uh, Anybody go on any kind of educational I have. I yeah. Have yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, that, again, that's just building your, your expertise. You're getting out right here. It's, it's, it's a longer play. And, you, know, you might get you know, a client from you know, a workshop that's great by yourself now, but you keep engaged with them. You get their information. You build your database through these workshops. That is an ultimate database to, to follow up with. And then, you know, when the time comes, you know, reach out to you. You have a heck of a chance of being that person. So, uh, who else wants to share with kind of what they're doing now for prospecting? Big signs. I do a lot of networking just because I, that's just what I like doing. And I go to most two networking groups just because people ask me or they ever come in, they're like, you know, well, this person's me. Wait, I'm sorry, I, can we go? I missed Oh, yeah, no, I just I do a lot of networking and it can get time consuming because at first you're like running around going to everything and then you kind of find what you do. Um, and so I co host a couple and now they're starting to do um, where we do like educational things like you speak for 20 minutes or you educate someone. And my biggest thing is like public speaking, and so that's kind of helped. Um, me and doing it in like small groups of people, it's just kind of like standing up there and educating. Okay, this is, I think the one I did was 20 minutes. It was like tips to improve, um, like ways to improve, to get more money out of your house, like things to focus on instead of doing like stupid things that aren't going to get you any money, like focusing on um, updating your kitchen or whatever. But my thing is, I need to do more education on social media. Like, I 
do social media and raise the awareness, but it's just having like these more videos, having these more educational things. Um, with how many transactions do you think came in this past four months over your like network? Well, Zillow was so my number one. Like, well, Zillow is my number one source of generation but the networking is just kind of empowered me I guess more and it's kind of people putting my name out there like I'm starting to get more where I meet people and they feel like they're like oh I know this person I know that um I had I think I had like maybe two or three that have actually come from it but it's also them introducing me to other people that they know um and that's why it's me just trying to find and take on the ones that aren't working or it's because there's kind of the same people that know it all the time and they're like Give me business, I'm not gonna so I was trying to also add value to those people to get business. It's, it's a longer play. I mean yeah, it, it, it's, it's a recognition, you know, familiarity play over time. But again, the more you're out there, like the more opportunities arise. I'll ask the pro to do things and create groups and it, you know it, it's it's a it's a thing to just establish yourself with, as a professional in that niche group in your area. Uh, when what do you know you need to be more of? Like what what's you know yeah. the one thing one thing that you can just about the models, you know that you can do all the time. I think doing social media videos, doing taking the education that I might meet people and just putting them because I see other people doing videos and I'm like, oh, this person started with this, or I should be doing this instead of doing um, social media videos and doing these things. Because I think I'm one of those people that I know I'm not one of those people that's going to sit in a room and cold call people. Like, I know I need to get out and meet people, or maybe then if I can't, you know, do that, then at least do it. Yeah, it's going to take me longer in person than social media videos. One more. Who wants to share with you now? I'll share, Mike, since I'm new at this. Uh, again, social media is definitely one thing I'm doing. You know, getting more Facebook posts out there. Uh, last week's course in, in brought up a new thing of how to be in front of people more often, getting engaged more with the, the recent searches and different things like that. Um, and I'm using Off City right now, which I, you know, that's kind of my main source of lead gen right now. And it's, you know, I'm working with some buyers now, um, haven't had any listings or anything like that. The one thing that I think I do want to put more time into, in fact, not think I want to put more time into, is community activities. And I think the, I think what will help there too is if we partner with some of our lenders or our closing companies, because I think today's buyers want to be educated. They don't want to be sold, they want to be educated. And I think if we can take a group to these community type functions that we're the experts and we're bringing the experts in, I think then there's no no uh, fear of commitment then from the buyers or people that would be there that they're going and getting an education on something that they have an interest in, especially first time home buyers. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge. I, mean, I, I don't know why it's not just, I don't know why every organization, every library does that. Every, I think there will be like a line of people trying to do presentations for first time home buyers. You know, I think the yeah. yeah, for me, I know mine, mine Zillow and Prospect, like my Zillow leads. That's where the majority of my business comes from. I can zero my circle of influence. You know, I mean, I zero. Uh, I just don't, don't block. You know, so I know that would dramatically change my business just by focusing on on, on that. Uh, you know, but the, the, the point is, there's opportunities all around us. You know, if we just sit down and, and you know, how many is there, how many people ever going off the for something? What's the question? Door 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 door. I've never door knocked. I no. called. Oh, yeah, I called. No, I thought no, I thought you were on No, I called and I got both. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, it's important. I thought you were on. No. I would do that. That's too cold. I called, <laughs> I called up for sale by owner for a buyer of mine. And they're like, oh, another agent calling me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I'm not trying to sell you. <laughs> so my buyer. So, so, I mean, the here's thing is, you know, especially now that it's cold, you know, there's nobody doing like it. Do you go to door and show that initiative and have a conversation? You got the door. I every expired for somebody on the list that door knock. I don't know. I got to show up at the door. They got to talk to me. And that's part of your three hour window. Right? That's my three hour window. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to get, you know, 100 phone calls in, but I can door knock, you know, five people. See, here's my thing with door knocking. Like, I tell my kids, do not answer the door for anybody. And so that's kind of how I feel. I know I'm a female. I'm probably oh, less most, intimidating than me. I don't get them or whatever. It takes time. But like, that, that's when you got to take the time. Now it's dark. I wouldn't do it in the right. evening now. But again, 
But if you, like, say you, you erase your three hour lead gen on Friday, put three hours of walking on Saturday from 11 to 1. Do you find them not answering the door though? Or? Oh, long rounds. They do? I've, I've never had anybody on those home uh, not answer. I mean, I've had a woman open the door. I mean, I've been, I've been sometimes with just a, you know, a t shirt and a sweatshirt and then they open the door. I mean, I've, I've been surprised even when they open the door. I can't believe they actually opened the door. But, you know, I mean, you know, it's just like the opening list there. What are you but, saying? They yeah. expire. So I'm going to expire today. You know, you know, I have a course, I'm going to like dealing with a real partner here. I said, you know, I know your house was listed, you know, for sale. Are you still considering or wanting to sell the house? And they say, yes. I say, great, you know, I'm just going to introduce myself, you know, uh, have you started interviewing agents yet? And most of them, you know, most of them have like, yes, but at least some of them just started or have lined up interviews or are going to start the interviews. They just like conversations about this. Well, I have, you know, I plan on next week being with agents. And say, well, I'm here, you know, great. I'm here to apply for the job and be in the house over. You know, so I want to be, you know, you know, consider, you know, and different set of times, you know, so you're meeting next week, you know, what's, when do you plan to meet agents? I plan to meet agents Monday and Tuesday. Okay, how about Tuesday at 6 p.m.? I don't want to be the last question. I don't want to be the fourth question. So you kind of ask those questions. So that, that's my simple, simple conversation is, are you still interested in selling house? Most of them are. And I, I don't get in, you know, I don't, you, the, the whole point of that conversation is setting an appointment. Don't offer them anything. Don't tell them what you would do different. Don't tell them why they didn't sell. Don't, if they will ask you questions, well, what do you think about my price? Well, yeah, again, that's a great question. I'm, you know, I'm going to have everything. You know, we're going to go over that when we get together. So, you know, what? set the appointment. Because if you don't set the appointment, then you start giving this and that, and they think this and that, then they, they might not say, you know what? I, you know, I'll, I'll call you and give me your call. But you, you, sometimes you, you're, we're, we're used to giving too much information away, and we miss appointments a lot. You know, have a conversation. They see you're a normal person, that you're taking initiative, you're not some, you know, they, they, they put a face to the name, boom, you get an appointment. I have never lost an appointment like that. And we'll, we'll go over the listing presentation. First, this way I tell everybody don't worry about the listing presentation now. Worry about having a 30 second conversation at door knocking. You get an appointment, I'll be with you whenever for the listing presentation. You know, one step at a time. Everybody wants to listen to this listing presentation. And I, I'll, I'll spend two hours in listing presentation, we'll never go off the You know, so again. That's setting your boundary, going to the revenue producing activities is you, know, you you show me that you put the initiative, you got an appointment, I'll spend all the time in the world to make sure you get that appointment. So, and the same thing with for sale by owners, is you gotta come from contribution with a for sale by owner. Don't lie to them. Every agent in the world is calling me for sale by owner saying, hey, I got a buyer, can I come preview your house? They're going to get in the house and they kind of know a rule to them. They're, they're like, you're going to be so impressed with, you know, you when you walk in the door that they're going to list with you. Bullshit. They're hearing it over and over and over again. You have no buyer for that house. If you do, like Amy did it one time, great. You know, she has a legit buyer. You know, good. But that's the most common script is, hey, you know, some you know, white wealthy one group have a buyer. You know, or you know what? I like to know every house in the market for sale. You know, I like to preview it. You know, you know, I sometimes come preview your third house because I generally have a lot of buyers. I don't want to know what's out there. You know, you want to get the list. You know, and, and and so the conversation is, you know, hey, you know, Mike, I'm introducing myself. You know. Uh, Wish you the best, you know, with, for self owner. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an Asian, I'm not going to discourage you never trying, you know, but the truth is, you know, one out of 10 properties for self owner actually successfully selling. You know, I'm just going to introduce myself. And, you know, when the time comes, you know, six weeks from now or so, you're sitting at the kitchen table, you're fed up with shows or whatever, you're thinking about your interview, interview for the job to get your house sold. I want to be considerable, considerable the job. And then, you know, then, then you know, you, you make an introduction. This is usually a long, like, like a couple week play, because typically around the four to six week period of time is when they start to list the ones that fit. So they've been on the market about two or three weeks is a good time to kind of hit them, you know, because they're still kind of think they're going to do it. Yeah. They haven't got to that point yet, but now they, your name's in the running, you know, you fall for the next week. Hey, you're just checking in, you have a hand button show. And so this, this is a, a bigger nurse, you know, and then one time, you know, is now we, you know, we've got to kind of give them something on the other side. Jerry, Jerry, uh, uh, did a great one. I don't remember the exact game plan, but I kind of like summarized it. Don't remember. When he went to a house and the four thousand other things that got there. He showed up the for sale by owner, door locked them. He just talked about you know, the property and just introduced himself. I think he gave him some tips. Hey, you know, I'm just here. I'm just noticing some landscapes. You know, maybe spruce this up or whatever. Uh, and then gave him the card. The guy called him and asked him a question. You know, he goes, you know, what do you think about my picture? Jerry just gave him his honest opinion. You know, I would do this, do that, or whatever. 
or vice versa, where the guy invited them out to go and look at something. But you know, and then I think the next time Jerry maybe like brought a seller disclosure. Hey, you know what? You know, if, if you do get a buyer, you know, you got to protect yourself. And you know, most people don't know what seller disclosure is. Here's the seller disclosure. Pull this out. Even if everybody comes to the house, you're protected. You know, offering them something that most of them don't even know. Seller disclosure. What the seller disclosure? You know, so you're offering, you're building that trust, you know, and then, you know, a week or two later, the guy called Jerry is up and fed up and listen. You know, so it's that, it's, that's kind of a full sale by owner play is, you know, come from contribution, come from offering something, introducing yourself, not giving them some skill that you're not going to hire, and just, just kind of building that relationship up. This, this, is, this is more of a nurture, you know, type, type play. Uh, but again, door locking, you know, is, is, is the first step to, to do one thing most people don't know. It's just that's the way you run that conversation. It's easy to hang up the phone, you know, especially when they used to call online for the phone. Or, or, you know, a good icebreaker for, for sale by owner is hey, this is like a real deal under, uh, hey, I have a you know, sick and tired of realtors calling me yet. And they're miserable, like, yeah, I'm so good. Me too. I, 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 I talk to them all day long. I'm tired of talking to them as well. You know, mm -hmm. so it's a guy like a little icebreaker, gets their guard down and say, you know what, I'm just introducing myself. You know, you got a great property, you know, you know. Wish you the best of luck. You know, time does, does come where you're fed up, or you know, you know, if you want to think about this thing, you want to consider for a job. You know, uh, you know I, I haven't done for a while, so I'm kind of like trying to think about my skill. But when I was going daily, on you know, I could actually, you know, you would get to the point where you know the, the next sentence out of the mouth and be able to answer before the said. And, and it, 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 it's beautiful when it starts flowing, you know, but it, I'm so uh, practiced, I, I got to kind of rehearse this kind of scripts in my head now. Uh, but when it's second nature, that's what it needs to become. It needs to become second nature. We're calling these people, spilling it, you know, again, they're not, not lying to you, not selling anything, they're reducing yourself, coming from contribution, building trust, you know, you're, you're going to get it. Uh, and, and like I said, it expires. Uh, question is, you're still looking to sell your house. I mean, for some reason, less than a change, but most of them are. You know, and they all, we have a real estate in the spring. Or whatever. If, and like, this is like now, that's what you might hear. If you take this initiative and start going on, or whatever expires. And again, we talk about the market for the winter, think about the listing in the spring. My conversation around that was like, you know, hear it all the time. I would let you like to sit down with you, learn more about why your property didn't sell, learn more about your property, talk about your timing, you know, and, 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 and just learn more about everything because, you know, it might not be the best option to go to the spring because, you know, you don't have a person that is not. And then instead of setting up. And then every time that, it's been about probably half a dozen, that, 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 Conversations come up with the expire and think about the spring. Send appointments and go over the reasons why you might want to leave those spring. You know, we'll learn our time. Some sometimes in time frames they can't list those spring. I, I fell off on you know, one, but most of them still want to sell. They think it's the best time to get popped off. You know, I go into the conversation. Listen, there's buyers out there all the time. More inventory coming in the spring. More competition. You know, and just go over the whole spiel. And then a lot of times you get, get on the market sooner than others. But the first step is setting up. Um. I got screwed the other week. I'm just telling people this because it's going to happen. I think eventually more and more. But I had a listing going from a from a old referral. So I sold this guy's house, went to his referrals, and like I thought, okay, I'm definitely going to get the listing. I did really good job for the other people. And he and his wife were both asking me a million questions and taking notes on the first appointment. Like, what should we do about this? What should we put on this wall? What about these dents? And at the beginning of the appointment, I got them disclosures, a painter, a contractor. Like, had everything lined up for them. All my referrals. And I hadn't heard from him for a couple of days. And I said, you know, do you want to schedule a photographer? And he gets here to do the listing paperwork. And he was like, oh, we just wanted your opinion. We actually already had decided to list with Brad Finn. And I was like, what the? <laughs> like, so they, they did tell me that. And Redfin, literally all they do is get it on the MLS. Yeah. For you. So mm -hmm. it's, that, that's it. They don't give any expert <laughs> opinions, anything like so that. First so choice. here, they got me in there. And, and my client who referred me, he felt really bad. He was like, I didn't know that they were doing but I bought them I spent like 20 bucks on Panera cookies and stuff to bring them and like wasted all this time on finding comps and all this oh yeah they used my comps too and, and all that stuff so it was just like so much wasted time when he knew what he was going to do already and he didn't tell me that like if he said hey listen they're willing to do it for one percent what can you do with your commission I would have said oh let me see you know as long you know I would have done something with our commission but we didn't even talk about commission because he didn't want me he wanted my advice, my opinion, info on comps. And oh, and he said for the comps, he was like, are these, can you print them in color, please? Because what you want to do is make color copies to have at his house of color comps for people that came. And I was like, you yeah, totally screwed me. 
Or so or so at this point, I'm like happy if other agents get listings for yeah. Redfin getting them because they do undercut us. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so easy. Oh, no. for, yeah, and I'm like thinking about it, like that guy was pretty smart to just come in and have me give my expert opinion. I was there for an hour and a half, you know? Uh, on, there's times that you're gonna, no matter what you do, no matter what kind of you go away, you're going to avoid that. So it's going to happen. You know, send the appointment, you know, kind of like a conversation on like a qualifying conference or question for prospective listeners, like especially as a spot manager. Yes, it's, it's like, you know, okay, at the end of this, you know, appointment, is there anything, if everything goes well, yeah, you know, you think I'm the best agent for the job that you will be willing to sign a listing question? Ask that question. And then they, then you know, if they say yes, and then they say, well, why? So what would why would you not? You know, if everything if everything I said, you know, I show you the value of why we're different, what we're going to get sold this time. Everything makes some sense, sense, sense to you. Why would you not sign this thing like that? And um, you know, because my friends and agents, you know, they don't wish not. You know, because you know that a lot, a lot of people know the agents are so big and numerous. Everybody knows agents somewhere down there. So. <clears throat> then that's not to the handle their objection. Okay. So yeah, I, I respect that you know your friend is an agent, but you know, is you know when it comes down to getting your household this time around. Bill points. Is your friend friend a professional a full-time agent? Does, does they have a whole team behind them? Use you use that you know, we have a whole team in the office. We have our, you know, our, you know everything in-house. We have you know, just, Show your value why you're different than because most people want to know a friend of or a friend or a friend of an agent. They just might do six houses and say, you know, have an agent about six houses. You know, I sold six, you know, in you know, the last two months I've sold. You know, whatever your stats may be, or use the puppy stats. The average agent, you know, you know, sells six. You know, the main agents I worked on in our office, you know, we'd be selling an average of six a month. Use the office stats. I mean, you gotta you gotta know numbers and stats and ask a few questions, look into these things and get what can't reject. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, my friends, you know, my wife's cousin that age, you know, oh, you know, I'll find you. No, no, you're still, you, you have the same door shut in. So you, you know, you, you can, you know, my wife will still get the equipment. And then it's like, why do you, you know, they won't be able to handle this objection? I got a list more right now. I found that with a guy, his wife is an agent, was an agent. She lives in Florida now. Her friend's an agent. You know, it's a for sale by owner. He's thinking about, you know, he has a guy come look at it, but he, you know, we have all the objections about why your wife's friend found up only less agents to the house. Uh, but you know, it's marketing, what we do is a lot. It's not every agent in the office sure is listing. That is great. If you're not using that many listings, you got a story. Like in this we come from office where everybody shows. We have 70 agents where not only me marketing your house, every single agent is marketing your house for us. They, they have the access to take your listing on their social media, their platform, and bring buyers because why they want to generate buyers. They want they want to get they want to get the deal closed and make money on buys. So we share our list. I use that all the time. Nobody else is saying that. There's no other office sharing. That, that's, my, that's one little listening presentation conversation. Nobody else is saying that. Add that to your listening presentation. Okay, we'll go over all these listening presentations if you time to get the presentation. Uh, but you, you just got to go there with hands and objections. And then, then set the appointment. And that's, that's kind of a qualified question. Still, that person, ulterior motives, you know, and say, oh, yeah, we'll sign. I mean, sometimes you just can't avoid shitty people. You know, mm -hmm. they're not deep. Uh, so, scripts and dialogue, go forward here. You know, five minutes. <coughs> okay. You can say it. No, keep going. Called scripts. And... So, guys, when you come to scripts and objection handling, and you don't want to sign a body, but we're going to send you a bunch of email scripts, like what we're going to send you a bunch of scripts that lets you. There are more scripts out there than you can, you know, go through. The point is, Memorize them, customize them, parallelize them, capitalize them. That means basically you got to make them sound like they're actually flowing. You don't got to sound quiet. Uh, and again, when it comes to scripts, you're going to see everything from expired to seller. You're duping people. You're, 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 you're making a fake buyer. I don't advocate that. I, I highly discourage that because you're not setting yourself in the way you have to tell me another reason to produce for seller. You know, again, that's why I can, you know, they don't trust us because they know. You got six people tell me they have a buyer, you know, from the house, they come here, you know, there's no buyer, they never bring a buyer, they never, go, they never hear from again, you know, it's, it's bullshit. And then that's the bad rap it gives us. So please don't, don't use those scripts. And I'm just going to, I have one of all the scripts in this program uh, to see if any of those are in there like that, but I'm probably all because of just some agents, that's the way off it. I come from contribution, true, 
uh, and, and try to try to help them. So again, script takes time. Just practice, practice, practice. Uh, the next slide. Uh, so this is going to prospect and schedule real quick here. So this is a I can't hammer this home enough, guys. For your prospect and schedule your time blocking. The world shuts down. If it doesn't shut down and run your three hours of lead generation a day, you are not going to maximize that three hours. So you're, you, you, might, you might sit in a room or do stuff or do stuff for three hours and get nothing accomplished. You check it off the box, but it's not a productive three hours. So that's where, again, the world shuts down because no emails, no phone calls, no buyers checking in. No, if it's an emergency, the first people that have an emergency should not get hold of you because we got to stay in our mindset. We got to be prepared. We got to, we got to get you know, our conversations down. And, it, it, it'll it'll happen when you're flowing. You, you know you're in a group, and when that, when that happens, it, it, it's going to happen. You're going to get some deep rail. You're going to try to get back on that group and not that happen. It's going to take one time. And you're going to realize that I got to shut the world down around this this time frame, or it's going to be not be productive. Again, read time block. I guarantee you're going to regain your life, do more work in half the time uh, because I'm not worrying about chasing those uh, supporting activities. Uh, next one, kind of the. the the fortunes and the follow up when it comes to these conversations. If we meet somebody or get a conversation with somebody, hey, I'm welcome to buy in three to six months, and we don't talk to these people in three to six months, they're sure as hell they're not going to forget about us. Right. So, kind of the time frame I follow up with is if somebody's buying in six to 12 months, I'm calling or contacting them on the phone once a month. If they're buying in three to six months, every two weeks, I'm touching base. If they're buying one to three months, I'm talking to them weekly. I set them up in the, in, the, in the multi list on the search so I can see if they're getting in there. In one or three months, you want to get, for, in the one or three months, you want to get into a house's ASAP just to meet that personal connection. Even if it's three months, meet them as soon as you can and kind of get them under a buyer agency agreement. <coughs> three to six months, you know, it's been about two, like, well, I don't have any five buyer agreements. Yeah, you do. Look at the little bit of a multi list. Just touch base, hey, you know, saw you looking at this list and this list. Do you have any questions? What do, you, what do you think about the prices, you know? Tell about what's going on in the market. You know what? It's still, 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 still selling the market right now. So you know, just have a conversation, and you're staying at the top of mind. And then you know what? One of those houses you call in that two weeks, and say, you know what? I worked out. This is intriguing. I might want to go to this one. Line it up. You know, but if you don't, if you just meet them and don't follow up for three months, oh how we know you're not going to do. The fortune is to follow. We've got to have our system, our CRM, and plan with our notes. All right, I talked to Jim Smith on today. You know, he's a for sale by owner. He said give him a call back in three weeks. You better be calling Jim next week. Just a touch base again. But you know how many, you know, last year, how many I lost that said, you know, uh, coming back in a month, you know, I'm going to give one more shot. Call up in a month. Oh, I listened to last week. Sorry, I need you call. Yeah. So whatever they tell you, cut it in half. If it's on a for sale by owner, you know, if you're, if you're, like, say, hey, you know what? You get a month, two weeks max. You're calling me. Hey, just hey, how's it going? You still, still giving it a go? You fed up yet? You know, just, so you've got to have your CRM setting up your, your follow Fortunes in the fall. You could have, you know, uh, a dozen people that are ready to buy in the next year. Mm -hmm. and if you're not following up more than the next person, we'll constantly stay in touch with them. That's not going to be easy. So that's that's the main thing. Get get your CRM organized with your daily tasks. So on your calendar, you know, if you're you know your three hour daily lead generating, you're you're setting up these prospects, and, and I call them you know, kind of like your, you know, my previous group we call them a watch was six and twelve, mm -hmm. uh, a nurture was three to six, and a hawk was one to three. You know, whatever you want to categorize them, set your plan for your, your categories. And like, so, you know, if, if there's, you know, a buyer, say I have five buyers, I'm touching base weekly. I set my daily tasks every week on Monday at 10 o'clock. I'm contacting these guys. That might just be a voicemail or a text. Hey, Jim, it's Mike Daniels. What do you want to do to check in? See if any of the catching there yet? Mm -hmm. Nah, still looking. Great. You know, have a great rest of the week. You know, if, if they do, give me a holler. Just keep it in touch with them. You know, and that, that's all on the lead follow up. Uh, you get to see them to do that. You're, you're, you're going to be chasing the wind. Your people are going to fall through. I have missed them. I know just with everything in business this year, at least 10 transactions of Zillow that I didn't follow up with. I totally forgot about uh, that when I went back through there and contacted them, they bought the house. I probably lost easily $60,000 off of Zillow by not having my CRM set up. Within the app. I use my phone, my calendar, my, my Zillow people follow ups. I'll show my house, you know, kind of just start the process. And just the business and hustle bustle of day, forget to put it in my follow up. Then I go back to those. Oh, you know, how more house I should have heard of. Shit, I forgot about it. You know, Alyssa, one way to Alyssa. Forgot about them. Alyssa, oh, I haven't used that house in a contract. But I lost touch. I didn't, I didn't keep in contact with them. That's, that's easy money. You just blew it away. You know, 
that happens at least you know ten times. Uh, so again, we don't have the systems utilizing that. You know, we're not going to cover the other track. Uh, utilizing the GPS tool. This, you know, talking about your weekly, monthly, and yearly goals, your weekly accountability sheet, uh, lead conversion tracking sheet. Uh, this is your calendar, uh, so we know where our time goes. Practicing our scripts. This is kind of you know, this is going to be the same kind of thing throughout the whole twelve weeks. We're going to be tracking these things, being accountable, setting our weekly goals, going over them. This you know, poster board is going to be powerful. Yes, you know, because you know, if everybody's in here, you know, getting at least one appointment, you're going to make that zero. You know, that should be motivation. It's not. Easy to sit down and figure out why. Uh, so, moving forward, you know, some of these I'm going to uh, combine in classes. You know, the things are recording. So, one habit, you know, three calls, three ads, six notes. You know, this next week should be 100 conversations, real estate conversations. Ads, this is, you know, people into our database. We should be adding at least 10% uh, into our database. So I'm about 100, 10 people in our database, uh, six notes, you know, handwritten notes. This is reaching out to our, to our sphere of influence already. So uh, I'm going to use this as, as a habit form for me, Jen. It's kind of modifying here. 100 calls, 10 uh, adds to our database. Minimum of one appointment should be set or make 100 calls. If we're actually having 100, 100, 100 conversations, we should have a minimum of one appointment. Uh, Just say we do this every week, 100 conversations a week, 52 weeks, 52 appointments, even if we suck at converting appointments, yeah. and we do a quarter of them. What's 52 divided by 4? 12 or something? 11? 5, 13, somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that, that's double the average income right there, just by going with one thing. So again, it comes down to it again, it, it's accountability, time blocking. Being as productive as we can, to create a balance. And this is all, but this much is about you know we're we're all about you know putting more money in your pocket, mission and making more money. But without the life life balance, what the hell's the purpose? So we that time block is going to give you freedom for your family, for your time for you know everything else outside of this. Uh, and then Renee's been honest and open, and she'll sit down and talk to you short and tell you how she like her her wallet didn't come crashing down, taking her weekends back. I know, I know, I, I, before I, that, yeah. I know she sneaks calls. In there. It's all about balance and, and achieving goals and goal setting. So again, commit. Some of the stuff that you require, but just being here and doing more than eight percent of the in the office. So you have to, you have to stay committed, stay fired up, reach out to me, be on. We're here, guys. And, and, and we've heard this numerous times. Oh, I didn't reach out to you because I thought you were too busy. Why the hell do you think we were doing this? We're, we're doing this. Because we enjoy this and want to help agents, and that's what we're here for. You know, and they don't wait. Something is 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 wrong. That you make a wrong decision because you didn't reach out to us. Because you did. You know, like, that's what we're here for. If you can't reach me, call Dean. One of us is going to get back to you ASAP. I don't think we have never had anybody, you know, say right away about back to you. Know, really? Yeah. You know, that's why. If I see an agent calling, you call for a reason. I call for chit chat. No, no, call me. Hey, we are. What are you up to? Call, but you need something. You know, so we got we gotta beat it. Uh, so that's it for today, guys. We, we, we got our action plan. Now we need to do for next week. There's next week meeting at the uh, park. Courtney meeting. That's a good call. I remember looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you could crack our hands if we need them? Hey, it's that calendar. It's that calendar. It's that calendar. It saved me a lot of money from going to the chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding either. How can we take it, man? Oh, my back, my SI joints look like that. Sometime next week. Do what? Hi, Presley. Hi, Presley. Say hi. Pepper. Piper, man. Piper, Piper. Oh, so cute. Uh, so yeah, what do you guys think? Monday, Monday, you want to go today or? Wait, what's Tuesday? Tuesday's the quarterly meeting. I might be hungry. Such a fun birthday. Yeah. Monday, it opens on Friday. Monday works. Monday works. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Like the skin. I, like it. <laughs> I hate all my Well, the only time I like the cold. Actually, Monday's birthday, but Wednesday. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you make jerky? Yeah. <laughs> I hate everything. I'm like, what he's on. Mike, I have a question. Yep. Can you crack our necks if we need it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't have my anymore. I don't care. <laughs> I don't really care. No practice. <laughs> <laughs> this, this dude. Do... Oh, Thursday. Yeah. What's that? We'll see. We're not doing it Monday. We're going Monday. Monday. I'll be speed. Wait, yeah. 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 Oh, guys, here, what I want you to do is, is this is pretty cool when you came in and forgot about it. Take an envelope, dress it, to, dress it to yourself, we'll stamp it, take a piece of paper. I want you to write goals for six months from now, where you want to be. Production wise, unit listing, buying size, and, and again, what, what, like, besides your, your real estate goals, like any family goals, you want to start working out, but this is your goal sheet. Put it in your envelope. I'm going to mail it to you in six months to see if we're on track. It's pretty cool when you, wow. when you get this six months later, uh, but kind of seeing where you are and yeah. what's changed. Because I got mine from Boulder, like, did they do it a year? It was a complete reset during six years. Like, <laughs> shit, yeah, I didn't have much, you know, but, I mean, it, was, it was good, you know, but, but this is pretty, pretty cool. And then there's a six month good checkup that we're going to fall fall up again in six months. Say, hey, where is we're at? So take an envelope, piece of paper, goals, personal, financial, real estate goals, and then self adjust or just for yourself, give it to me next week. And then get the books. And we'll talk about uh, what we're talking about. Well, that include losing 20 pounds. He's mad. He's at the gym. Oh. Let's try that. I can't do it anymore. <laughs>